guy around the computer. PD to Ireland. Yep.
changed for a generation of Americans. An attack then unimaginable in scale was about to unfold at the World Trade Center. And a moment of silence a few moments from now will mark the time American Airlines Flight 11 struck the North Tower. Good morning, it's good to have you with us as dignitaries and families gather in Lower Manhattan once again, clutching photographs that 18 years later look almost dated, but those memories are, are still painful as they recall those who were either just going to work or just doing their job or just there when terrorists uh, unfolded this attack in the World Trade Center and later at the Pentagon and in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where there are also commemoration ceremonies planned. We are joined this morning by Robert Boyce, the former chief of detectives for the New York City Police Department. Chief, you were in the Bronx at the time. What happened when you heard about a plane hitting the, the World Trade Center? Good morning, Aaron. On Being in the Bronx, you could see the whole skyline of Manhattan and you could watch the buildings from where we were. And I had made every plan to go down there. I had uh, gotten one sergeant, eight police officers ready to go with me to help out in the after. Because you saw from what we saw from the top of the, uh, uh, from the bottom of the Bronx to the top of Manhattan, you saw that people had, had perished. You could clearly see the, the fires in the first tower. Uh, by the time I uh, saddled up, as you say, as you will, and got the, headed down there, we had a bomb scare and I had to shut down the Triborough Bridge. That day I had to shut down all the bridges that attached Manhattan to the Bronx. So we did that, and I finally got down later that, uh, that evening and saw the chaos and that white cover, and you could taste the, the air, airborne particulates um, in your mouth as you walked about. And in the following in, uh, days, we worked 12-hour days, seven days a week, with, uh, all the way through uh, mid, uh, mid to late December. So it was, the tasking was just incredible. And that has taken a toll on the New York City Police Department. 23 officers with the NYPD died that day. In the last 18 years, 241 have died of 9-11-related cancer and other illnesses, more than 10 times as many. New York City Fire Department, an equally devastating toll, 343 that day, 202 in the last 18 years. This ceremony of commemoration is now beginning in Lower Manhattan at the World Trade Center site. An honor guard carries a flag that flew at the World Trade Center, a bit battered, but no less majestic. Many family members of those who died that day are clutching photographs of the dead, holding them aloft as this flag passes by through a cordon of police officers and firefighters at attention and saluting. Pipes and drums from the New York City Police Department and the Fire Department following behind providing the solemn accompaniment to 9-11 commemoration ceremonies 18 years later.
The national anthem from Lower Manhattan on a day of commemoration, 18 years after 9-11. The bell tolls at 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time, the exact time that American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Some thought it may have just been an errant small plane, but it quickly became clear that this was a terror attack, and a generation of Americans was forever changed. Right. I The ceremony of commemoration begins in New York. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have just stepped out onto the South Lawn of the White House to observe a moment of silence. The president will speak later this morning during a ceremony of commemoration at the Pentagon. We're joined from Washington by Don Mahalik, an ABC News contributor and former Secret Service agent who was in New York at the time. Don, you were here for the U.N. General Assembly, which was about to begin, uh, responsible for protecting all manner of dignitaries that were in town. Yeah, that's right, Aaron. Good morning. Um, September is usually the ramp-up time for the Secret Service for the U.N. General Assembly, where traditionally you get ready for all the heads of state to come in. And on September 11th that year was actually our meeting that we were having at our office at the time at Seven World Trade Center. Um, we had agents in from New York, uh, uh, agents from D.C., um, we're all coming to the Seven World Trade for, uh, for this uh, first meeting to st st kick off UN General Assembly planning. So when the first plane uh, hit, uh, a call went out over the office, and all the agents uh, essentially Gordon. moved to the street to start helping and helping evacuate people, performing first aid, um, and trying to help because at that point everybody still thought it was an accident. Mm. Four federal agents lost their lives that day, Don, and including a Secret Service agent. <laughs> Secret Service lost its headquarters in New York. It did. The uh, Seven World Trade, uh, at the end of the day, collapsed. Um, the entire Secret Service office was lost. Uh, Master Special Officer Craig Miller, who was a, who was a veteran, former Army, um, was also lost during the attacks. And uh, in addition to that, it just changed the entire protective dynamic for the Secret Service after 9-11. The recitation of names is now underway in Lower Manhattan. This is probably the most important part of the 9-11 commemoration. Edward Adderley, Jr. Sophia B. Otto, Lee Adler. Daniel Thomas Aflito. Emmanuel Akwasi Afakwa. These names are read in alphabetical order. It takes between three and four hours Joseph to get through Adela. the nearly 3,000 names to John say nothing Edwards. of uh, the hundreds Joel of lives that have been Alberto lost in the last Alberto 18 Alberto years to 9-11 related Jr. cancer and Brian other illnesses. Doctors have now Jeremiah connected cardiovascular Joseph disease to service Jeremiah on Marie. or shortly after 9-11. ABC Amen. News contributor Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI, was here in New York at that time and he joins us as well. Uh, Rich, good morning. You were you were about to go down to the site and then what, called back? Yes, Aaron, uh, uh, good morning. Um, we were at uh, 26 Federal Plaza when the first plane hit. Um, we didn't know what was going on. We, we were not looking out the windows. We then learned about the plane hitting. We um, started to uh, go down in that direction. And then when the second plane hit and uh, we knew it was uh, terrorism, uh, Many of the individuals continued down, but we were at one point called back uh, to begin the investigation. And this was within minutes of the second plane hitting uh, when everyone knew that it was terrorism at that point. Uh, the FBI, the JTTF, NYPD, uh, all, all the members of the uh, task force uh, started uh, manning up. Uh, so to speak, and, and, and getting together uh, and beginning the investigation. Uh, it was uh, truly a, a sight to see in, in, in how uh, these teams came together uh, immediately after the attack uh, to see what we could do uh, 
to go after those who had uh, who had uh, attacked the World Trade Center, and then of course the uh, continuing attack throughout the morning. Yeah, the entire FBI priority list sort of changed as 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 and as Don mentioned that of of the Protective Service and uh, Chief Robert Boyce, former chief of detectives of the NYPD, and another. ABC News contributed that you know the, the police department uh, transformed as 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 well into sort of a counterterrorism fighting force. We really had we had some assets early on, but things had changed dramatically after that. Um, soon thereafter, uh, Ray Kelly became the uh, commissioner and uh, built a, um, uh, a structure within the NYPD that we carry today, and that 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 we were able to. Um, change things as far as uh, we saw with the back line in Paris, we had to have an answer for that. So we started the CRC, a group of individuals with uh, with uh, weapons who can respond quickly. So you think about where we've come in the last 15 years. Uh, it's just an incredible journey. It really is. But back to that day, yes. as we listen in the background to, 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 to the names that, that are being recited, um, a lot of cops uh, among among those names too. Yes, a lot of police officers, and when you think of the uh, all those, uh, our, our Herculean task afterwards was it was the largest crime scene in the world, and uh, we it started we shrank it from started at Chamber Street and then moved in from there, and those after in those days I can remember uh, in those immediate days thereafter, people coming there who lost their um, sons and daughters, wives and husbands, and just in tears, and you try to support them as much as you can, and then you walk back to the pile and you work that again. So um, and like I said. Um, Seven days a week, 12 hours a day. It was just, you were just in a fog most of the time. But you, you knew what the tasking was. You worked hard. An emotional fog, but, but a physical fog for a long time as, as that kind of cloud persisted in lower Manhattan. I, I've been in the Tete Bureau most of my career, as you know, and uh, there are times you worked three and four days straight. There was nothing to compare with this because you just kept going. You could barely drive home at night. You were so tired. Your body was just shaking. And, uh, and you had that smell. Uh, in your in your nostrils, you had a taste in your uh, in your mouth of that of those those airborne particulates, and you never forget that. And you, you always question yourself, well, how come this hasn't affected me yet, and it affected the guy I worked the pile with right next to, right next to me? How come he passed and I didn't? So that's something you carry, and you think of more than anything else on this day. You still think about that? Of course, of course. You still go to the funerals. You still honor them as best you can, um, as, and then you keep them in your heart. But you just you just think, and you think of all those suffering from PTSD in the aftermath of that. It's, it was a gory sight. Robert Boyce, former chief of detectives of the New York City Police Department and ABC News contributor. Uh, so was Don Mahalik, formerly of the Secret Service. Uh, Don, I, I think the attitude toward uh, law enforcement officers in the country uh, changed after 9-11, where there, there was a good deal of appreciation shown for all of the, the efforts, heroic and otherwise, by, um, you know, by, by any manner of law enforcement or firefighters. That sort of, you know, that, that has ebbed and flowed over, over the years. So how should we remember this day, and, and, and what should we be thinking about? You know, Aaron, I always look at 9-11 as a day of extraordinary heroism and extraordinary bravery. Um, all the first responders that went down to ground zero, you know, as it's always been said, ran into danger. And they put their lives on the line to save others' lives in a very selfless and courageous manner. And uh, that is the memories that we should you know, we should always think about. And when you look at a law enforcement officer or a police officer on the street, you know, I always try to remind my girls, which I tell them to go thank any police officer or firefighter they see, you know, to keep, to keep them safe, that, you know, at any moment in time when uh, terror comes or if there's a crime in progress, you know, it's those individuals that are going to go protect somebody. And uh, unfortunately, that has ebbed and flowed. But, you know, the countless... You know, thousands of random acts of, of courage that occurred on September 11th and then occur every day by our law enforcement officers is something people should keep in perspective when they look to criticize the law enforcement profession. But, you know, the other thing I wanted to point out, Aaron, is even people that weren't uh, at Ground Zero or weren't at one of the attack sites performed acts of courage. You know, my wife was a school teacher on Long Island, and she was dealing with calls coming in of, uh, you know, whose parents are not showing up whose children need to go home, who may not have a parent. And, you know, so even down to that, she was an ele elementary school teacher having to handle the aftermath um, outside of New York City. You know, it was a tremendous act of, of selflessness and courage on their part as well, and I think we should always keep that in perspective too. Uh, the attacks affected so many communities within New York City, outside the city. There were people from 49 different states uh, and from a number of countries around the world 
who lost uh, who lost loved ones here. By now, the north tower of the the World Trade Center was engulfed in the in the upper floors, and a few moments from now, uh, the the second plane hit United Flight 175 struck the the south tower. Uh, Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI and, and, and an ABC News contributor, at, at what point did it become evident that this was what it was, a, a terror attack and not some some accident? When the second plane hit, uh, you know, when the first plane hit, uh, we've had accidents where planes have hit uh, buildings, you know, going back to the Empire State Building, you know, uh, 50 or so years ago. So it was not known to be a terrorist attack at that point. While we might have suspected it, we did not know. When the second plane hit, there was no doubt in anyone's mind of any of the people that I was working with, with any of the people that I've talked to since, we all knew that uh, it was a terrorist attack. And then what I think people could not believe was the continued terrorist attack uh, by the attack on the Pentagon and then the plane that went down in Pennsylvania uh, when the... uh, uh, People on board the plane were able to fight back and stop uh, stop the terror attackers uh, from uh, actually striking a location that we believe to be in D.C., a second location. Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI and an ABC News contributor with us on the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. The recitation of names goes on in Lower Manhattan. G. Bay. Michelle Beal. Todd M. Beamer. Paul Frederick Bettini, Jane S. Beattie, Alan Anthony Beaven. You heard the name of Todd Beamer uh, aboard the United Airlines Flight 93 that crashed near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, credited with being among the passengers to steer the plane away from its intended target in Washington, D.C. Who was a carpenter from Tipperary. He was the light of the party, the guiding light of our family and now our shining star in heaven. We miss him dearly. And my brother, Michael Joseph Zinzi. Family members of those who were killed in 2001 are those reading the names and offering personal tributes on uh, this day of remembrance in New York, in Washington, and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. For my colleagues, I'm Aaron Katursky. You've been listening to live coverage from ABC News. Denise Leonor Benedetto. Brian Craig Bennett. Eric L. Bennett. Oliver Bennett. Margaret L. Benson. Dominic J. Berardi. James Patrick Berger. Stephen Howard Berger. John P. Bergen. Alvin Bergsong. Daniel David Bergstein. Graham Andrew Berkeley. Michael J. Berkeley. Donna M. Bernarts. David W. Bernard. William H. Bernstein. David M. Beret. David Shelby Berry. Joseph John Berry. William Reed Bethke. Yanene Bertru. Timothy D. Betterly. Carolyn Mayer Buke. Edward Frank B.A. Firefighter Paul Michael Bayer. Anil Tahilram Baravani. Bella J. Buchan. Shimmy D. Beagleson. Firefighter Peter Alexander Bielfeld. William G. Biggert. Firefighter Brian Eugene Bilcher. Mark Bingham. Firefighter Carl Vincent Beanie. And my mother, Arlene Ava Freed. Not a day goes by that we don't think of you and miss you. Your three grandchildren are here today, all named in your honor. Even though they are not fortunate enough to have met you, they know of your strength and courage, your big heart and loving personality. May your memory always be a blessing. And my cousin, Janine Damiani Jones. I wish I got to meet you, love you. Gary Eugene Bird. <clears throat> Joshua David Birnbaum. George John Bishop. Chris Romeo Bishontat. Jeffrey Donald Bittner. Albert Balawa Blackman Jr. 
Christopher Joseph Blackwell. Carrie Rosetta Blackburn. Suzanne Leigh Blair. Harry Blanding Jr. Janice Lee Blaney. Craig Michael Blass. Rita Blau. Richard Middleton Blood Jr. Michael Andrew Bacardi. John Paul Batchy. Michael L. Bacchino. Susan M. Bocchino. Dara Francis Bodley. Bruce Douglas Bohm. Mary Catherine Murphy Bova. Nicholas Andrew Bogdan. Darren Christopher Bohan. Lawrence Francis Boisseau. Vincent M. Boland Jr. Tori Hambavi Balarchi. Alan Bondarenko. Andre Bonor. Colin Arthur Bonnet. Frank J. Bonamo. Yvonne Lucia Bonamo. Sean Booker Sr. Kelly Ann Booms. Canfield D. Boone. Mary Jane Booth. Sherry Ann Bordeaux. Christine Bordenabe. Jerry J. Borg. Martin Michael Borisevsky. Richard Edward Bosco. And my aunt, Gabriella Silvino Weisman, who I never got to meet, but who I've heard many great things about and who I love very much. And my twin brother, Ian Schneider. We miss you dearly, Ian. Hardly a day goes by where we don't laugh at something you said or did, but we don't wish you were with us. If you were here, you would be so proud of how Cheryl, Rachel, Sophie, and Jake have persevered and thrived. And boy, are you terribly missed by Mary Jo, Christine, and Drew. And we are so, so sorry that Michael P., Brittany, and especially beautiful Joy never got to meet the one and only great Ian Schneider. We miss and love you, Ian. Klaus Bota. Carol Marie Bouchard. J. Howard Bolton. Francisco Eligio Bodier. Thomas Harold Bowden, Jr. Donna M. Bowen. Kimberly S. Bowers. Frederic Nicole Bowers. Larry Bowman. Sean Edward Bowman, Jr. Kevin L. Bowers. Gary R. Box. Gennady Boyarski. Pamela Boyce. Alan P. Boyle. Michael Boyle. Alfred J. Rocca. Sandra Canetti Brace. Kevin Hugh Bracken. Sandy Wa Brackshaw. David Brian Brady. Alexander Brugensky. Nicholas W. Grandamarty. Daniel Raymond Brandhorse. David Reed Gamboa Brandhorse. Michelle Renee Bratton. Patrice Rout. Lydia Estelle Bravo. Ronald Michael Reitweiser. Edward A. Brennan III. Frank H. Brennan. Michael E. Brennan. Peter Brennan. Thomas Moore Brennan. Daniel J. Rethel. Gary Lee Wright. Jonathan Eric Riley. Mark A. Brisman. 
Paul Gary Bristow. Marion R. Britton. And my brother, Robert R. Talhami, I miss you, we miss you. Mom and Dad are now up there with you, and I can't wait to see all of you soon. Thank you. And Kevin L. Bowser, brother, father, husband, cousin, friend. Your good spirit and legacy is with us every day. And thank you, David, for sharing his legacy all over the world. Mark Francis Broderick. Herman Charles Broghammer. Janice Jolice Brown. Bernard C. Brown II. Mark Bruce. Lloyd Stanford Brown. Andrew Brun. Bettina B. Brown Radburn. Ronald Booker. Richard George Bruhert. Greg J. Buck. Vincent Edward Brunton. Nancy Claire Boucher. Brandon J. Buchanan. John Edward Bulaga, Jr. Dennis Buckley. Christopher L. Burford. Patrick Joseph Buse. Thomas Daniel Burke. Stephen Bruce Bun Bunnin. Charles F. Burlingame III. Matthew J. Burke. Donald J. Burns. William Francis Burke, Jr. Keith James Burns. Thomas E. Burnett, Jr. Irina Busolo. Kathleen Ann Burns. Thomas M. Butler. John Patrick Burnside. Timothy G. Burn. Milton G. Bustillo. Jesus Naptali Cabezas. Patrick Dennis Byrne. Brian Joseph Caccia. Daniel M. Caballero. And my cousin, Thomas F. Swift. Your family misses you. You'll always be remembered. Lillian Cacheras. Stephen Dennis Caffiero, Jr. And my son, my beloved son, Joshua Todd Aaron. Josh, there are no words to tell you how much you are missed. How much I, we remember and miss you, your intelligence, your humor, and your love. Every day is less valuable without you. Richard Michael Caggiano. Cecil Mareja Kakikla. John Brett Cahill. Michael John Cahill. Scott Walter Cahill. Thomas Joseph Cahill. George C. Kane. Salvatore B. Calabro. Joseph M. Calandrillo. Philip V. Calcagno. Edward Calderon. Jose O. Calderon Omedo. Kenneth Marcus Caldwell. Dominic E. Calia. Felix Bobby Calixte. Francis Joseph Callahan. Liam Callahan. Suzanne M. Cali. Gino Luigi Calvi. Rocco Camash. Michael F. Camarada. David Odie Campbell. Jeffrey Thomas Campbell. Robert Arthur Campbell. Sandra Patricia Campbell. Sean Thomas Canavan. John A. Candela. Vincent A. Cangelosi. Stephen J. Cangelosi. Lisa Bella Canapa. Brian Canazaro. Michael R. Canty. Louis Anthony Caparici. Jonathan Neff Capello. 
James Christopher Cappers. Richard Michael Caproni. Jose Manuel Cardona. Dennis M. Carey Sr. Edward Carlino. Michael Scott Carlo. And my brother, Donald W. Robertson Jr. Donnie, words cannot express how you are missed and loved. Your legacy lives on in your four beautiful children, Michael, Matthew, Madison, and Kevin, as well as your friends and family, and also through Team Shamrock. We choose to remember how you lived, not how you left us. God bless you all, and God bless America. And our cousin, firefighter Thomas Anthony Casoria, you are loved and you are missed. As we remember and honor all those who died on 9-11 and their families, let us not forget those first responders who have died since 9-11 and their families. And pray for all those first responders who have or will become ill as a result of their dedication and sacrifice at Ground Zero. God bless us all and God bless America. David G. Carlone. Rosemary C. Carlson. Mark Stephen Carney. Joyce N. Carpinetto. Jeremy Kaz Carrington. Michael C. Carroll. Peter J. Carroll. James Joseph Carson, Jr. Christopher Michael Kartstingen. Angeline C. Carter. James Marcel Cartier. Sharon Ann Carver. Vivian Castaldic. John Francis Casaza. Paul Regan Cassio. Neely Ann Heffernan Casey. William Joseph Cashman. Thomas Anthony Casoria. William o Otto Casper. Alejandro Castaño. Arcelia Castillo. Leonard M. Castriano. Jose Ramon Castro. William E. Caswell. Richard G. Cattarelli. Christopher Sean Caton. Robert John Caulfield. Mary Teresa Caulfield. Judson Cavalier. Michael Joseph Cawley. Jason David Kane. Juan Armando Sabalos. Marcia G. Cecil Carter. Jason Michael Cephalou. Thomas Joseph Selick. Anna Mercedes Centeno. Joni Sesta. John J. Chatta. Jeffrey Mark Chernoff. Swarna Chalasani. And my grandfather, Gerard A. Barbara. FDNY Assistant Chief of Department Gerard A. Barbara, Incident Commander of the South Tower Rescue Operations, who is a brave, encouraging, and hardworking man. He never gave up on the work he started, always used to make people laugh, and of course made the job get done right, right the first time. He had two children and a wonderful wife. If he was still alive, I would not only think of him as my grandfather, but my role model. I love him with all my heart, and I shall never forget him. I love you, Papa Jerry. God bless all our families on this difficult day, and God bless America. And my uncle, firefighter Joseph Patrick Henry. Uncle Joey, I wish I got to know you, and I love hearing stories about you. I'm honored to be named after you, and I know that you're watching over us right now. William A. Chalkoff. Eli Shallow. Charles Lawrence Chan. Mandy Chang. Rosa Maria Chapa. Mark Lawrence Charette. David M. Charlebois. Gregorio Manuel Chavez. Pedro Francisco Checo. Douglas McMillan Cherry. Stephen Patrick Cherry. Vernon Paul Cherry. Nestor Julio Chevalier, Jr. Sweet Joseph Chevalier. Alexander H. Chiang. Dorothy J. Chirichiaro. Luis Alfonso Chimbo. Robert Chin. Eddie Wing Wei Ching. 
Nicholas Paul Chiafalo. John G. Chipura. Peter A. Chirichillo. Catherine Ellen Chirils. Kyung He Casey Chio. Abul K. Chowdhury. Mohammed Salahuddin Chowdhury. Kirsten Lael Kristoff. Pamela Chu. Stephen Paul Chupnik. Y. Ching Chung. Christopher Chia Fardini. Alex F. Chacon. Francis Ann Silente. Elaine Shillo. Edna Cintron. Nestor Andre Cintron III. Robert D. Siri Sr. Juan Caballos, since, since, excuse me. Juan Pablo Cineros. And my husband, Benjamin Keith Clark. To some, he was a great chef. <laughs> to some, he's an unsung hero. To us, he'll always be loved, he'll always be missed. He'll always be our hero. Um, we're expecting our first grand and so many milestones that he's missed. So please excuse me if I stumble over any of the names with all respect to our lost loved ones. This one is kind of hard. Eugene Clark and my uncle, John Patrick Hart. We all love and miss you, and we'll lead, lead on through your legacy. Gregor Allen Clark. Manny Leroy Clark. Sarah M. Clark. Thomas R. Clark. Christopher Robert Clark. Donna Marie Clark. Michael J. Clark. Surya Rachel Emma Clark. Kevin Francis Cleary. James D. Clear. Jeffrey W. Cloud. Susan Marie Klein. Stephen Copley. Jeffrey Allen Cole. Uh, Patricia A. Cody. Uh, Daniel Michael uh, Coffey. Jason uh, Matthew Coffey. Florence G. Cohen. Kevin S. Cohen. Anthony Joseph Calodonado. Uh, Mark Joseph Coleo. Stephen J. Coleo. Chris Tuff or Michael Colasanti. Kevin Nathaniel Colbert. Michelle P. Colbert. Keith E. Coleman. Scotch Thomas Coleman. <laughs> Terrell Coleman. Liam Joseph Colhoon. Robert D. Colin. Robert J. Call. Jean Marie Collin. John Michael Collins. Michael L. Collins. Thomas Joseph Collins. Joseph Kent Collison. Jeffrey Dwayne Coleman. Patricia Malia Kaladner. Linda M. Cologne. Saul E. Cologne. And my father, Richard Arono. I love you very much. I miss you. My brother. I love you very much. I miss you. My brother, Richard Avery Arono. William's father. We love him. We miss him. We will never forget. Thank you.
Ronald Edward Comer. Jaime Concepcion. Albert Conde. Denise Conley. Susan P. Conlin. Margaret Mary Connor. Cynthia Marie Lise Conley. John E. Connolly Jr. James Lee Connor. Jonathan M. Connors. Kevin Patrick Connors. Kevin F. Conroy. Brenda E. Conway. Dennis Michael Cook. Helen D. Cook. Jeffrey W. Coombs. John A. Cooper. Julian T. Cooper. Joseph John Capo Jr. Gerard J. Coppola. Joseph Albert Corbett. John J. Corcoran III. Alejandro Cordero. Robert Joseph Cordes. Ruben D. Correa. Danny A. Correa Gutierrez. Georgine Rose Corrigan. James J. Corrigan. Carlos Cortez Rodriguez. Kevin Michael Cosgrove. Dolores Marie Costa. Digna Alexandra Costanza. Charles Gregory Costello, Jr. Michael S. Costello. Asia S. Cottom. Conrad Kofi Katoy, Sr. Martin John Coughlin. John G. Coughlin. Timothy J. Coughlin. And James, my, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> James E. Cove. And my dad, Dennis Michael Cook. It's been 18 years, and we wish you were here with us every day. We love you. And my brother-in-law, firefighter John Chapora, who exemplified kindness, compassion, bravery, and a strong sense of duty. Serving our country as a US Marine, John narrowly survived the Beirut bombing. After that, he would always say, my life is a gift. So he lived a giving life. He came home to serve his city and the NYPD. He died as a firefighter, helping people escape the South Tower. That's just who he was. But John would not want me to dwell on him or his service. He would point to the memory of everyone whose lives were lost that day and the over 2,000 people who died of 9-11 related illnesses since then. Also to our military who have made the ultimate sacrifice. And to those who still suffer physically and psychologically, we acknowledge you too. He would be overjoyed that his sister Nancy escaped the North Tower and proud that his brother Gerard, the captain standing behind me, has dedicated his life and career to helping FDNY families in their grief. Thank you for listening to all these names. Never forget, keep smiling on us, John. Semper Fi. Andre Colin Cox. Frederick John Cox. James Raymond Coyle. Michelle Coyle Eulo. Christopher Seaton Kramer. Eric A. Cranford. Denise Elizabeth Crant. James Leslie Crawford, Jr. Robert James Crawford. Tara Kathleen Creamer. Joanne Mary Cregan. Lucia Crefasi. John A. Cresci. Daniel Hal Chrisman. Dennis A. Cross. Kevin R. Crotty. Thomas G. Crotty. John R. Crow. Wells Remy Crowther. Robert L. Cruikshank. John Robert Cruz. Grace Ilegre Cua. Kenneth John Cubas. Francisco Cruz Cubero. Thelma Cuccinello. Richard Joseph Cudina. Neil James Cudmore. Thomas Patrick Cullen III. Joan Cullinan. Joyce Rose Cummings. Brian Thomas Cummings. Michael Joseph Cunningham. Robert Curitolo. Lawrence Damian Curia. Paul Dario Curioli. Patrick Joseph Curavan. Beverly L. Curry. Andrew Peter Charles Curry Green. Michael Sean Kurt. Patricia Cushing. And my brother, FTNY Battalion Chief Oreo Joseph Palmer. Or 
very young. It is hard to believe it has been 18 years. But you have always remained in our thoughts, in our hearts, and deep in our souls. Dana, Keith, and Alyssa, and your three beautiful grandchildren all embody your life and spirit. We will always love you and miss you, and most of all, we will never forget you. And my father, firefighter Jonathan Lee Ayelpi. Andrew, mom and I miss you very much every day, and we know you're watching over us. We love you a lot. Gavin Kushney, Caleb Aaron Dacht, Carlos S. DeCosta, Jason M. Dahl, Brian Paul Dale, John Delara, Vincent Gerard D'Amadeo, Thomas A. Damaskinos, Jack L. D'Ambrosi Jr., Janine Demiani Jones, Manuel Joel DeMoto, Patrick W. Danahy, Mary Danatino, Vincent G. Dans, Dwight Donald Darcy, Elizabeth Ann Darling, Annette Andrea Dotteram, Edward A. Diatri, Michael D. Dioria, Lawrence Davidson, Michael Allen Davidson, Scott Matthew Davidson, Titus Davidson, Nyurka Davila, Ada M. Davis, Clinton Davis Sr., Wayne Terriel Davis, Anthony Richard Dawson, Calvin Dawson, Edward James Day, William Thomas Dean, Robert J. DeAngelis Jr., Thomas Patrick DeAngelis, Dorothy Alma de Araujo, Anna Gloria Pocasandra de Barriera, Tara E. DeBeck, James D. Debinure, Anna M. Debin, James V. De Blase Jr., Giselle Malabuyak de Cherves, and my beloved son, Kevin James Murphy, who I hold close to my heart and think about daily. You would be so proud of your now grown up children, Caitlin and Connor, and the wonderful job your wife, Beth, has done raising them. I love you and miss you, but I picture you often up in heaven, together with your father, looking down on all your family with pride and joy. And my uncle, John Patrick Gallagher, keep shining down on us, big guy. Paul DeCola. Gerald F. DeCanto. Simon Maresh Debrukaj. Jason Christopher DeFazio. David A. DeFeo. Jennifer De Jesus. Monique Effie De Jesus. Nareda De Jesus. Emmy De La Pena. Donald Arthur De La Pena. Azucena Maria De La Torre. Vito Joseph De Leo. Danielle Ann Deli. Andrea De La Bella. Joseph A. De La Pietra. Palmina Delagati. Colleen Ann DeLowry. Joseph DeLuca. Manuel Del Ballet Jr. Francis Albert DiMartini. Anthony DeMoss. Martin N. DeMeo. Francis Deming. Carol Keyes Demitz. Kevin Dennis. Thomas Francis Dennis Sr. Jean C. De Palma. Jose Nicholas De Pena. Robert John Durani. Michael DiRienzo. David Paul DeRubio. Jamal Legas 
DeSantis. Christian Louis De Simone. Edward De Simone the Third. Andrew J. Desperito. Michael Jude Desposito. Cindy Ann Duell. Melanie Louise Devere. Jerry DeVito. Robert P. Debit Jr. And my husband, Bernard Petronico. We've learned how to live without you, but we will never forget you and we miss you always. And my brother, Khalid Mohammed Shahid. Your beautiful spirit and contagious smile lives on through your four nieces and one nephew who bears your name. Not a day goes by that you aren't in our thoughts and memories. Keep shining down on us, big bro. We love you, miss you, and we'll never forget. God bless you, and God bless us all. Dennis Lawrence Devlin. Gerard P. Dewan. Sulemanali Kasamali Danani. Michael Lewis D'Agostino. Matthew Diaz. Nancy Diaz. Abdulio Ruiz Diaz. Michael A. Diaz Piejo III. Judith Burgess Diaz Sierra. Patrick Florence Di Chiaro. Ronnie Dickens. Jerry P. Dickerson. Joseph Dermot Dickey Jr. Lawrence Patrick Dickinson. Michael D. Dio. John DeFado. Vincent Francis DeFazio. Carl Anthony DeFranco. Donald Joseph DeFranco. John D. Giovanni. Eddie A. Dillard. Deborah Ann D. Martino. David DiMeglio. Stephen Patrick Demino. William John Dimling. Marissa Denardo Shaw. Christopher Moore Dinkoff. Jerry Mark Dingle. Rena Sam Denu. Anthony Dionisio. George D. Pascal. Joseph D. Pilato. Douglas Frank D. Stefano. Donald Americo de Tulio. Ramsey A. Doani. Johnny Doctor Jr. John Joseph Doretti. Melissa Candida Doy. Brendan Dolan. Robert E. Dolan Jr. And my uncle, Lanel Jeronimo Morocho Morocho, and my aunt, Blanca Robertina Morocho Morocho, who were siblings that day, who died in the towers. We love and miss you so much. You'll always be in our hearts. And my brother, Lieutenant Michael Francis Lynch, Ladder 4. The heroism that you showed that day and all the first responders and civilians were, was amazing. We miss you and love you. M. Sherman. Diane M. Simmons. And her husband, George W. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. Cheryl D. Simcock. Chief Greg H. Smallwood, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gary F. Smith, United States Army, retired. Mary Ray Sopper. Robert Spiesman. Patricia J. Stotts. Edna L. Stevens. Norma Lang Sturley. Sergeant Major Larry L. Strickland, United States Army. Hilda E. Taylor. 
Lieutenant Colonel Kip P. Taylor, United States Army. Leonard E. Taylor. Sandra C. Taylor. Sandra D. Teague. Lieutenant Carl W. Teepee, United States Army, retired. Sergeant Tamara C. Thurman, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Otis V. Tolbert, United States Navy. Staff Sergeant Willie Q. Troy, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant Commander Ronald J. Vock, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Colonel Karen J. Wagner, United States Army. Meta L. Fuller. Specialist Chin Sun Pak Wells, United States Army. Staff Sergeant Maudlin A. White, United States Army. Sandra L. White. Ernest M. Wilshire. Lieutenant Commander David L. Williams, United States Navy. Major Dwayne Williams, United States Army. Chief Marvin Roger Woods, United States Navy, retired. Captain John D. Yamnicki, Sr., United States Navy, retired. Vicky Yancey. Petty Officer Second Class, Kevin W. Yoakum, United States Navy. Chief Donald M. Young, United States Navy. Edmund G. Young, Jr. Lisa L. Young. Shuin Young. And her husband, Yu Guang Jing. Coverage from ABC News, remembering 9-11. Here is ABC News correspondent, Aaron Katursky. At this moment, 18 years ago, Lower Manhattan was fully engulfed after two planes hit the twin towers of the World Trade Center, and American Airlines Flight 77 had just struck the Pentagon. The nation had come under attack. At that spot at the Pentagon, there is now a giant American flag, a memorial, a recitation of names and soon remarks from President Trump. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin is at the Pentagon for us and with us live. Good morning, Elizabeth. Hey, good morning, Aaron. This memorial that has sprung up is, is quite moving and it's where there are any number of service members arrayed this morning. 
Absolutely. It's it's a really beautiful memorial that's just across from where that plane hit the Pentagon on 9-11. It has 184 benches that represent each of the people who was lost, both on the plane and in the building that day. Uh, the benches mark the ages of those who died, uh, and those heights of the benches correspond to the ages. So the lowest bench is about three inches for the person who was three years old, all the way to 71 inches. And that that's where President Trump, along with the Defense Secretary Mark Esper and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Joseph Dunford, will make remarks here shortly. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin at the Pentagon. The president has just laid a wreath there in memory of those who died at the Pentagon. The recitation of names continues in Lower Manhattan, and there is a gathering in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where United Airlines Flight 93 crashed just moments from now, 18 years ago. Don Mahalik, formerly of the Secret Service, now an ABC News contributor, lost his headquarters here in New York at the time. But, but, but Don, this was around the time President Bush, 18 years ago, was reading to a class of children in Florida when his chief of staff, Andy Card, had to whisper in his ear. Yeah, that iconic image, Aaron, of Andy Card walking up to the president and telling the president, Mr. President, a second plane has hit the World Trade Center. The nation is under attack. It's one of those images that will forever exist in American history. And that decision to do that um, was a tremendous staff decision of how to approach the president and how to um, let him know that the nation was under attack, uh, where he was live on camera in front of a bunch of school children. Um, but, you know, Andy Card being the way he was, which he was a tremendous chief of staff, ultimately made the decision to make sure the president was informed and uh, let him know what was happening. The president was kept airborne for, for a long time. When they, uh, yeah, when, uh, when they decided to leave the school and uh, go to Air Force One, there was a lot of uh, decisions that had to come into play about where, where they were going to go, where the president uh, was going to uh, basically take command of the, uh, of the country from because, you know, nobody knew exactly where the next attack was coming. Nobody knew how many planes were in the air. Nobody knew if it was a wider plot. Uh, they were very concerned that Air Force One itself was a target, but they also knew that because Air Force One was a plane and was mobile, it was the best protection for the president. Uh, which is why uh, they stayed uh, aloft for so long and ultimately landed uh, uh, in Nebraska uh, at the Air Force Base there. Don Mahalik, uh, an ABC News contributor formerly of the U.S. Secret Service, with us on this day of commemoration, 9-11 ceremonies, 18 years after the attacks killed nearly 3,000 people in this country. We're about to hear remarks in a moment from President Trump, ABC's Karen Travers, is our White House correspondent. Uh, the, the president has uh, made the rounds uh, uh, at, at a number of these sites uh, over the last couple of years. Last year, he was in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and delivered remarks there. And he and the First Lady went and stood at the observation deck there. I was with the president that day for the trip. And they spent a couple of minutes looking out over that field. And one of the things that we kept hearing in the speeches that day and from talking to people who were gathering was how that was just an ordinary place, you know, unlike the World Trade Center, such an iconic part of the New York City skyline, the Pentagon, such a critical part of Washington and, uh, you know, the, the, the nation's national security apparatus. This was just a field in the middle of Pennsylvania. But for the people who gathered there that day, it takes on such a significant personal meaning. And the president took a few moments with the first lady. Remember, they were holding hands, looking out. It was a dreary day at this vast landscape before them. Today, here at the White House, about an hour ago, the president and first lady, as they do gathered on the South Lawn for a moment of silence, uh, gathered with staff for coming over to the Pentagon just now. You can hear hail to the chief as the president and first lady Melania Trump ascend to the stage at the Pentagon where he will make remarks moments from now at a ceremony of commemoration in front of gathered dignitaries. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin is there watching all of this with us. Elizabeth. 
Hey, it's it's really, I'm just thinking of what an interesting anniversary this is of 9-11, coming really right on the heels of the collapse of those peace talks uh, with the Taliban that the U.S. has been negotiating for many months now, and the president revealing over the weekend that he had invited the Taliban uh, to, to Camp David uh, and, the, and called off those talks amid a lot of violence and, and a record number of Americans killed in Afghanistan in recent years. Uh, and so we can't really forget that this war has gone on, um, despite this being a, a different enemy, the Taliban instead of al-Qaeda, who attacked uh, the United States homeland on 9-11. This is still very much uh, in the top of the news and, and a fight that is still affecting a lot of American service members and their families here at home. And and, and the Pentagon, of course, has been at the center of the, 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 the fight against terrorism then and still now. Oh, absolutely. It's it's top of mind and something that we still hear regularly from officials, despite a pivot to what they're calling these near peer competitors like Russia and China. Uh, the U.S. can't seem to get out of the Middle East, whether it's Al Qaeda, the Taliban in Afghanistan and now ISIS uh, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, there's still a fight that is happening. There are still thousands of American troops that are deployed overseas. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin with us from the Pentagon, where this ceremony of commemoration includes remarks from President Trump moments from now. Uh, first, though, we are going to hear from the, uh, the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of Defense. moment of silence to mark the moment of impact of American oh God, Airlines Flight 77. Our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Loving God, 18 years ago, terrorists sought to crush and divide us. Instead, the world witnessed the true American spirit. We rejoiced with survivors and shed tears for people we never met. We gave thanks for the men and women who put their lives at risk in an attempt to rescue and aid total strangers. And today we remember the children, parents, spouses, family and friends whose hearts will forever know the sting of grief. Do not, we pray, let our hope be overtaken by anger. Do not, we pray, let our hearts remain flooded with despair. Be our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble and help us rest in your promise that, that even if we forget you, you will never forget us. And as persons of many faiths, nations, and cultures gather today, use this ceremony to make all of us a little more like the Twin Towers survivor, Mr. Primwith, who said, I still have the shoes I wore to work that day. The soles are melted and they're caked in ash. And they're my reminder of God's presence and the life I owe to him. May this be our prayer. Amen. The invocation at the Pentagon during this cer ceremony of commemoration to include remarks from President Trump moments Ladies from and now. Gentlemen. The American the Airlines Chiefs Flight 77 staff. struck the Pentagon at this moment 18 years ago. General William Dunford is chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. President, Mrs. Trump, Secretary and Mrs. Esper, distinguished guests, and most it. importantly to the survivors and family members that have fallen who are with us, good morning. It's an honor to join you at this sacred place where 184 men, women, and children were taken from us before their time. They and those lost at the World Trade Center and in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, were the innocent victims of an unprovoked attack. And while they were taken from us prematurely, their memory lives on. We're here today to renew our commitment to never forget. General William Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 
to be followed by the Secretary of Defense and then the President of the United States. We are joined here by Chief Robert Boyce, the retired chief of detectives from the NYPD and ABC News contributor. I, I wonder, Chief, in New York, the two towers were fully engulfed. They had yet to come down, but that was coming in the next hour. Uh, were you aware at the time of what was unfolding at the Pentagon and then later in Pennsylvania? Not at all. You were, uh, you were, uh, you were totally focused on what was happening in New York. Uh, you knew what was, it was a terrorist attack, but you didn't know the, 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 the breadth of it across the nation. And you were waiting for other things to happen in your city. Um, you didn't think it was over with. So we were waiting, all waiting for another shooter to drop on us. It didn't happen. Uh, it happened elsewhere. So it was, there was a real uh, uh, thought of um, shutting down, isolating Manhattan, getting as many people out of Manhattan as we could, especially lower Manhattan. And we did. A lot of people, uh, and it's, it's, we don't talk enough about it, the individual who responds for civilian persons, helping others uh, leave the scene, walking over the bridges, getting out of New York, getting to Penn Station, uh, staying there and staying overnight, however they can get home those, e those evenings, the people in the boats across the, the rivers. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of these things we talk about, and uh, it's impossible to convey to a new generation exactly what happened that day. Because it was chaos in Lower Manhattan. Complete, and we're used to chaos. We handle chaos, and we have uh, a very large police department, but still, you, you, know, you lose certain things, and opening up routes to get resources into Lower Manhattan was a, was a tough task to do, and uh, we played roles in that, but then when you got down there, and now it's a beautiful sight you see now. It's a, it's a sense of reverence that you, it's inescapable when you walk through the, the memorial and into the uh, museum. Uh, but I remember what it was. It was a pit in the, in the days after. I remember uh, carrying one of my uh, officers out, John Perry, from the pit. We, we recovered his remains in, uh, in March the following year. So this just went on and on and on. Forever. And, uh, forever. And so I look at this now and look at the beauty of it and, uh, and just think what, the, what it was then and, uh, and the, uh, the incredible sacrifice of all agencies. Uh, and I can reflect on the NYPD, but there were other agencies involved here, too, the fire department, just again, um, and the people in New York just supported us, cheering as we drove into uh, Lower Manhattan, cheering for us. And, uh, and Don spoke about it earlier, how things had changed. In 2014, they were marching against us. So <laughs> you, when, you, when you sit back in that backdrop, you can't help but uh, reflect and, uh, and look at your life and say, what happened here? Chief Robert Boyce, the retired chief of detectives of the NYPD and ABC News contributor. Uh, we're, we're joined, too, by Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI, another ABC News contributor. I, I mean, it, at this point, Rich, the, the FBI had now well established this was a terror attack. Two planes had hit the, the World Trade Center. A third plane had, had just struck the Pentagon. I mean, what was the FBI thinking at this point? They were thinking, of course, who did this? And it immediately went to bin Laden, to al-Qaeda. Uh, I think uh, um, not, not that we could say it was him, but uh, the agent on the street or the street agent thought that it was uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, we went back uh, you know, to the coal bombing. Uh, you go back to the embassy bombings in Africa. Um, there really was no doubt in our mind who was behind it. We just didn't know how he did it. We didn't know the, 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 the breadth of the operation at this point um, and, and how they had planned it. But uh, that was um, the focus that we started with. But while we were doing that, we were looking in other directions, because even though that was everyone's belief, you never want to lock that down until you know. Mm. You don't know something until you know it. So we did a wide-ranging investigation. We were looking at all terrorist groups, all possible actors, to see who might have been a participant um, uh, terrorist in this uh, in this endeavor. And again, it did come back to those who, who we believed you know, at the forefront uh, were, the, uh, were the terrorists in this, and uh, again, it was al-Qaeda. I, I mean, the, the, the World Trade Center had come under attack previously in 1993, but, but had anyone ever imagined an attack on this scale? No, you know, 
Uh, now looking back, I would say maybe somebody did, but at that time, I don't believe anyone had looked at, at that scale. You know, it, it, it was more the story of novels. You know, uh, it, it was nothing that you would have thought would have happened. Again, you, you know, you had the attack um, uh, on the embassies. You did have two attacks, you know, uh, uh, basically side by side in Africa, uh, two different embassies. Um, going back, you had the attack on the uh, on the embassy in Lebanon. There had been large scale attacks, but nothing that r- rivaled this. Hmm. Rich Frankel, uh, formerly of the FBI, uh, an ABC News contributor with us on this 18th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. American Airlines Flight 77 had crashed into the Pentagon, and President Trump has just been introduced for his remarks. Secretary Esper, today our nation honors and mourns the nearly 3,000 lives that were stolen from us on September 11th, 2001. On these grounds, 184 people were murdered when al-Qaeda terrorists overtook American Airlines Flight 77 and crashed it into the Pentagon. For every American who lived through that day, the September 11th attack is seared into our soul. It was a day filled with shock, horror, sorrow, and righteous fury. I vividly remember when I first heard the news. I was sitting at home watching a major business television show early that morning. Jack Welch, the legendary head of General Electric, was about to be interviewed when all of a sudden they cut away. At first, there were different reports. It was a boiler fire, but I knew that boilers aren't at the top of a building. It was a kitchen explosion in Windows on the World. Nobody really knew what happened. There was great confusion. I was looking out of a window from a building in Midtown Manhattan, directly at the World Trade Center, when I saw a second plane at a tremendous speed go into the second tower. It was then that I realized the world was going to change. I was no longer going to be, and it could never, ever be, that innocent place that I thought it was. Soon after, I went down to Ground Zero with men who worked for me to try to help in any little way that we could. We were not alone. So many others were scattered around trying to do the same. They were all trying to help. But for the families who join us, this is your anniversary of personal and permanent loss. It's the day that has replayed in your memory a thousand times over, the last kiss, the last phone call, the last time hearing those precious words, I love you, then the attack. The anguish of knowing your family member had boarded one of these flights or was working in the World Trade Center or serving right here at the Pentagon. You waited, you prayed, you answered that most dreaded call, and your life changed forever. To each of you, the First Lady and I are united with you in grief. We come here in the knowledge that we cannot erase the pain or reverse the evil of that dark and wretched day. But we offer you all that we have, our unwavering loyalty, our undying devotion, and our eternal pledge that your loved ones will never, ever be forgotten. Eighteen years ago, the terrorists struck this citadel of power and American strength. But the enemy soon learned that they could not weaken the spirit of our people. In times of distress, the heart of the American patriot only grows stronger and more determined. Even in the midst of the attack, the world witnessed the awesome power 
of American defiance. Forty passengers and crew on Flight 93 rose up, fought back, and thwarted the enemy's wicked plans. In their final moments, these American heroes thunderously declared that we alone decide our fate. We saw American perseverance in the valiant New York firefighters, police officers, first responders, military, and everyday citizens who raced into the crashing towers to rescue innocent people. One such American was retired Army Colonel Rick Rescorla, who gave his life on 9-11. Rick earned the Silver Star and the Purple Heart for his service in Vietnam. He later became the Vice President for Security at Morgan Stanley in the World Trade Center. On the day of the attack, Rick died while leading countless others to safety. His selfless actions saved approximately 2,700 lives. Today, I'm honored to announce that we will soon be awarding the late Rick Rescorla the Presidential Citizens Medal for his extraordinary sacrifice. Though Rick has left this earth, we will ensure that the memory of his deeds will never, ever be forgotten. His memory will forever endure. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Here on the western side of the Pentagon, we saw brave men and women rush into the fire and race into the scorching flames to rescue their colleagues. When evil seeks to do us harm, the incredible men and women of the United States military answer with unyielding valor and unstoppable resolve. Navy Admiral David Thomas crawled through live wires and helped lift a wall of debris to save the life of a colleague. As Admiral Thomas remembers, it was the worst day of my life, but the heroism and selfless disregard I saw that horrible morning is forever burned in my heart. Admiral Thomas, America salutes you and every patriot who defied evil that day. Thank you very much, Admiral. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Army Ranger Chris Brayman repeatedly went back inside the burning building, rescuing one injured person after another. Before he entered, he said a prayer and asked God to give him strength and then he dove into the suffocating smoke and fumes and flames. At the same time, Sheila Moody had just prayed that someone would find her. Then she heard Chris's voice. As Sheila says, God sent Chris as her guardian angel. To Sheila and Chris, America is strengthened by your goodness and your grace and your bravery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. To fulfill our unbreakable promise to every survivor and family of 9-11, earlier this year, we fully reauthorized the Victims' Compensation Fund to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. Since September 11th, Nearly six million young men and women have joined the United States Armed Forces. They have crossed seas, climbed mountains, trekked through deserts, and rushed into enemy compounds to face down the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Nearly 7,000 service members have laid down their lives to protect our home, our flag, and our American way of life. American freedom survives only because there are patriots willing to sacrifice everything in its defense. No tribute is sufficient to convey the infinite depth 
of our nation's gratitude. On this solemn day of remembrance, our thoughts also turn to the 200,000 valiant soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and Marines who are now, at this very moment, stationed overseas. We do not seek conflict. But if anyone dares to strike our land, we will respond with the full measure of American power and the iron will of the American spirit. And that spirit is unbreakable. We had peace talks scheduled a few days ago. I called them off when I learned that they had killed a great American soldier from Puerto Rico and 11 other innocent people. They thought they would use this attack to show strength, but actually what they showed is unrelenting weakness. The last four days, we have hit our enemy harder than they have ever been hit before, and that will continue. And if for any reason they come back to our country, we will go wherever they are and use power the likes of which the United States has never used before. And I'm not even talking about nuclear power. They will never have seen anything like what will happen to them. No enemy on Earth can match the overwhelming strength, skill, and might of the American armed forces. And we have rebuilt and strengthened in the last two and a half years, spending $700 billion, $716 billion, and now just approved $738 billion, more money by far than ever spent on our armed forces. You are the fearless sentinels who stand watch over all that we cherish and everything we hold sacred priceless and dear. This morning, we also give thanks to the dedicated men and women at the Department of Homeland Security. Their department was created after 9-11 to help secure our immigration system and ensure that those who threaten our people are denied entry to our shores. We're indebted to every law enforcement official, state, local and federal, who devotes their life to keeping America safe. As we gather at this moment and at this incredible memorial, we are reminded that there is no greater testament to our fallen heroes than the presence of their families who knew and loved them so much. Among the family members here today is Stephanie Dunn, her husband, Navy Commander Patrick Dunn, was one of the patriots who gave his life right here 18 years ago. Before he left that morning, Patrick gave Stephanie a big, beautiful kiss. Then, for the first time, he leaned down and kissed her pregnant stomach. Stephanie was just two months along with their first child. Earlier this year, their daughter, Allie, celebrated her 17th birthday. Allie grew up into a strong, truly remarkable young woman. She mentors the children of our nation's wounded warriors. And recently, I was honored to give Allie the President's Volunteer Service Award for her hundreds of hours of community service. We are blessed to have Allie here with us at today's ceremony. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And Ali, I know your dad is watching over you. He's right up there. He's watching from heaven, looking down right now with love and pride. He is so proud of you. Thank you very much. Incredible. Also joining us is the Vigiano family. For generations, the Vigiano family has served in our military and in the New York City 
fire and police departments. These are two great departments. I grew up with them, I know. On September 11th, NYPD detective Joseph Vigiano rushed into the World Trade Center and died rescuing his fellow citizens. His brother, John, was a New York firefighter. He also gave his life that day at Ground Zero. At the time, Joseph's three sons were just young boys, ages eight, six, and three months old. This morning, they are with us. The youngest, John, just started his freshman year of college at SUNY Maritime College, and he plans to join the military. Joseph Jr. is a Marine reservist, and just like his father, he is a proud member of the NYPD. And James is a corporal in the Marines. On his last deployment, James was stationed on the USS New York, a ship made using 24 tons of steel from the World Trade Center. Every time he left the mess hall on his way to his bunk, he passed a picture of his dad. To John, Joseph, and James, and to the Vigiano family, you have sacrificed beyond measure, and you will never, ever stop giving back to this country. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The heroes present today remind us of an immortal truth. The future of our nation is secured through the vigilance of our people. The brave men and women who tore through the gates of hell to save the hurt and the wounded. The service members who honor the friends who perished by continuing their exceptional life of service. The moms and dads who endure the loss of their soulmates and fill their children's lives with all of the adoration in the world. The sons and daughters who suffered grave loss and yet through it all persevere to care for our neighbors, defend our homeland, and safeguard our nation. Each of your lives tells the story of courage and character, virtue and valor, resilience and resolve, loyalty and love. This morning, we make a sacred vow to carry on this noble legacy. Today and every day, we pledge to honor our history, to treasure our liberty, to uplift our communities, to live up to our values, to prove worthy of our heroes, and above all, stronger than ever, to never, ever forget we are now and will forever be one American family, united by patriotism, bound by destiny, and sustained by the faith of Almighty God. Thank you. God bless you. God bless our military. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Live from the Pentagon, President Trump, who said the September 11th attack is seared into the soul of every American who lived through it. He shared personal recollections of his day in New York and paid tribute to the 184 lives Ladies lost at the Pentagon 18 years ago. He also noted the roughly 6,000 U.S. service members who have been killed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other locations involved in the fight against terrorism. The president issued a bit of a warning to terror groups, saying if they should strike the country again, they have never seen anything like what will happen to them. I'm Aaron Katursky. You're listening to live coverage from ABC News. Live to the White House and our White House correspondent, ABC's Karen Travers. Karen. Aaron, this was a different speech from the president than what we've heard from him before on this day of remembrance. It was a combination of a tribute to the heroes of that day. He talked about the people who went in to save lives, who were comforting people impacted. It was a remembrance of the victims and the lives that were lost that day. But this was also a very aggressive message about American military power. The president, of course, standing in front of the Pentagon, the symbol of 
American military might. And he noted that he canceled those talks this past weekend with the Taliban. A lot of controversy over the president's decision to potentially have Taliban leaders at Camp David for negotiations about a peace agreement in Afghanistan. He said he canceled those talks after the death of a U.S. service member last week in a suicide attack. And he threatened to hit back at the Taliban harder than ever before. I think this line is the key line from the president. He said, no enemy on earth can match the overwhelming skill and strength and might of the American armed forces. So standing in front of the Pentagon, which of course was one of the sites of an attack on September 11th, the president with a very aggressive message about the U.S. strength. ABC's Karen Travers with us from the White House and at the Pentagon, where the the president and first lady are uh, still standing uh, for uh, this commemoration ceremony. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin. I I was stunned, Elizabeth, when he mentioned the the toll among the armed forces, uh, 6,000 service members in the last 18 years. Yeah, so many service members killed in these wars in Afghanistan and, like you just said, in Iraq and now Syria. Uh, I think what really stood out to me was when he was telling the stories of some of these individuals killed on 9-11, it's now their children who are serving, uh, some who were not even born on 9-11 or, or just three months old in the case of the Rigiano family that he talked about whose father was killed when he was serving with the NYPD. Uh, those, his sons, now serving overseas on ships, their marine corporals, uh, and they were just children when they lost their father in 9-11. So the fact that we now have uh, kids who have never known anything else, they are now joining, serving as sailors, marines, soldiers, airmen, and fighting this same terror fight that began 18 years ago. ABC's Elizabeth McLaughlin at the Pentagon for us. And I want to get some final thoughts, too, from a group of ABC News contributors, all of whom had different experiences on on 9-11. We're going to begin with Don Mahalik, formerly of the Secret Service. Don. Every time 9-11 uh, comes around, Aaron, I'm reminded about the, the heroism and the bravery displayed by all the first responders that answered the call at Ground Zero, Shanksville, and at the Pentagon. Uh, it, was a, it was a day of unmatched courage, unmatched valor, and, um, it was a, uh, and in the aftermath, we saw the nation come together and in a beautiful way. And uh, although we've dealt with the aftermath between uh, 9-11-related illnesses and the, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan since, um, when I think of that day, I just, I just remember the countless acts of, of courage and bravery, and uh, I'm, I'm humbled by it when I, think, when I think of what people did on that day. Don Mahalik, formerly of the Secret Service, there with Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI. Rich. What I think about is how we're not done, uh, that uh, the fight is still going on. Uh, you know, prior to 9-11, uh, the FBI... Uh, the other agencies were all looking at terror attacks throughout the world. That has not changed. What we have done, though, is gotten better at what we do. Uh, we've come together, as Don said, uh, in a community of law enforcement and intelligence operations and DOD, and now we fight the fight together. Um, and uh, those who will attack us, it is my hope that uh, we will come at them uh, not as hard as they come at us, but harder so that uh, we don't have to go through this ever again. Rich Frankel, formerly of the FBI, uh, now an ABC News contributor, with Chief Robert Boyce, the retired chief of detectives of of the NYPD, uh, here with us in New York. Chief? Uh, The president's remarks on uh, the individual uh, references that day, the sacrifice made, and I can remember with great clarity, Joe Vigiano was a friend. Joe Vidge, as we called him, who's quite a character. And um, I remember those little boys standing at his funeral uh, in the aftermath there. And here they are now, grown up 18 years later, in the fight. Uh, Incredible American story. So that's staying with me right now. Chief Robert Boyce, formerly of the NYPD, on this 18th commemoration of the 9-11 attacks. President Trump continues to shake hands at the Pentagon. A ceremony is underway in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where United Flight 93 came down and the recitation of names continues on in New York City. I'm Aaron Katursky. You've been listening to live coverage from ABC News.
Allison Hoistman Jones. Arthur Joseph Jones III. Brian Leander Jones. Charles Edward Jones. Christopher D. Jones. Donald T. Jones II. Donald W. Jones. Judith Lauter Jones. Linda Jones. Mary S. Jones. Andrew Brian Jordan Sr. Robert Thomas Jordan. Albert Gunnis Joseph. Ingeborg Joseph. Carl Henry Joseph. Stephen Joseph. Jane Eileen Josiah. Anthony Jovic. Angel L. Warbe Jr. Karen Sue Jude. Ann C. Judge. Michael F. Judge. Paul William Jurgens. Thomas Edward Jurgens. Shashi Kiran Lakshmikanta Kadaba. Gavaroy Kamar Dinova. Shari Kandel. And my cousin, Brian Christopher Hickey. Brian, to say you missed would be an understatement. Uh, you were a, a cousin, a friend, and a mentor wrapped into one. I thank you for that. You conducted yourself with class and integrity, so be rest assured your legacy and your soul are intact. I can't believe it's been 18 years. May you rest in peace, and don't worry, Brian. We, and when I say we, I'm talking about a whole lot of people, we will never forget. And my sister, Judith Ann Reese. Judy, it has been 18 years since we lost you, and we miss you every day. We miss your presence and all that you meant to us. We miss your awesome deviled eggs that you made for our holiday dinners. We miss how much you love country western music, especially Garth Brooks. We miss this and so much more. As you know, we were all deeply saddened with the passing of Elizabeth a few months ago. You and she were incredible sisters and friends, and we take comfort knowing that you welcomed her into heaven with open arms. We all miss you both very much, and we know that you are both watching over all of us. Judy, your nephews and niece and their spouses, Michael and Loma, Brian and Jackie, Kevin and Eileen, Christine and Joseph, and Dennis and Holly are wonderful people, and they are raising incredible children. And please know that we felt the love and presence of both you and Elizabeth at Emily and Justin's wedding a few weeks ago. As one sports season begins and another one comes to a close, I know that you'll be cheering for your Redskins and Elizabeth will be cheering for her Yankees. Well, goodbye for now. We love you both. May God bless all the families of 9-11. May God bless our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, and all in our military. Howard Lee Kane. Jennifer Lynn Kane. Vincent D. Kane. Jun Ku Kang. Sheldon Robert Cantor. Deborah H. Kaplan. Robin Lynn Kaplan. Alvin Peter Kaplan Jr. Charles H. Karcheski. William A. Carnes. Douglas Jean Karpiloff. Charles L. Casper. Andrew K. Cates. John A. Casmanis. Robert Michael Colfers. Don Jerome Kuf Jr. Hidea Kawauchi. Edward T. Keene. Richard M. Keene. Lisa Yvonne Carney Griffin. Carol Ann Kiesler. Barbara A. Keating. Paul Hanlon Keating. Leo Russell Keen III. Brenda Kegler. Chandler Raymond Keller. Joseph John Keller. Peter R. Kellerman. Joseph P. Kellett. Frederick H. Kelly III. James Joseph Kelly. Joseph A. Kelly. Maurice P. Kelly. Richard John Kelly Jr. Thomas Michael Kelly. Thomas Richard Kelly. Thomas W. Kelly. 
Timmy Colin Kelly. William Hill Kelly Jr. Robert Clinton Kennedy. And my cousin, Alfred Anton Bucosa. And my brother, firefighter Paul Hanley Keating. Paul, you lived right down the street, ran into the firehouse, ran into a burning building, and never came out. We're proud of him, but we miss him every single day. Thomas J. Kennedy. Yvonne E. Kennedy. John Richard Kehane. Ralph Francis Kershaw. Ronald T. Kerwin. Howard L. Kestenbaum. Douglas D. Ketchum. Ruth Ellen Kettler. Boris Califf. Norma Cruz Khan. Sarah Khan. Tamor Faraz Khan. Rayesh Handawal. Sele Ku. Michael Vernon Kiefer. Satoshi Kikuchihara. Andrew J. Hoon Kim. Lawrence Don Kim. Mary Jo Kimmelman. Heinrich Kimmig. Karen Ann Kincaid. Amy R. King. Andrew M. King. Lucille Teresa King. Robert King Jr. Lisa King Johnson. Brian K. Kenny. Takashi Kinoshita. Chris Michael Kirby. Robert Kirkpatrick. Howard Barry Kirschbaum. Glenn Davis Kerwin. Helen Crossan Kittle. Richard Joseph Claras. Peter Anton Klein. Alan David Kleinberg. Karen Joyce Klitzman. Ronald Philip Klepfer. Stephen A. Knapp. Eugenie Niazov. And my father, Deputy Chief Raymond Downey. My hero, Dad, we miss you, we love you. There's not a day that go by that we don't think of you. We cherish the memories that you gave us. You would be so proud of your five children, 16 grandchildren, your beautiful wife, Rosalie, the rock of our family, who continues to keep your memory alive, and my two brothers keep their legacy. I love you, Dad, until we meet again. And for my uncles, Mark and Stephen Kaleo, they truly represented the idea that there are so many beautiful reasons to be happy and to stay hopeful in life. God bless America. Andrew James Knox. Thomas Patrick Knox. Rebecca Lee Kabori. Deborah A. Kobus. Gary Edward Keckler. Frank J. Costner. Ryan Cohart. Vanessa Lynn Shibolo Kolpak. Irina Kolpakova. Suzanne Rose Contratinko. Abdullah Kone. Bon Siok Ku. Dorata Kopiksko. Scott Michael Kopitko. Bohan George Kohitsik. Danielle Kushulis. David P. Kovalchin. John J. Kren. William Edward Krakowski. Lumila Casida. 
Toshia Kuge. Shakar Kumar. Kenneth Bruce Kumpel. Frederick Ko Jr. Patricia A. Kuras. Noka Kushitani. Thomas Joseph Kuvakis. Victor Korkai. Raymond Kufai Kwok. Angela Reed Kite. Andrew Lacorte. Carol Ann Laplante. Jeffrey G. Latouche. Catherine L. Labori. Amarnat Latchman. Ganesh K. Ladcat. James Patrick Ladley. Joseph A. LaFalse. Jeanette Louise LaFond Minichino. David James LaForge. And my uncle, Thomas Joseph Collins, who's reunited with his mother and father in heaven. To know my uncle, Tommy, was to love him. Jen, Tim, Colleen, and their families miss you dearly, and we love you very much. And to my father, Joseph John Berry, whose motto was, life is good. We miss you more than my heart and soul ever thought possible. But that is only further evidence of the love and light you brought into this world, our lives, and the lives of everyone that knew you, and that love never dies. You truly were something special, self-made, brilliant, good-looking, and kind, the model of a life well-lived, quick with a smile and affection, generous and friendly to everybody. You taught me the most important things in life, so every day I strive to do better and be better. Your nine grandchildren love and talk about you all the time, even though they never got the chance to meet you in person. That legacy, your legacy of love, lives on through them, mom, the great love of your life, and all of us. I love you. Michael Patrick Lafuerte. Alan Charles LaFrance. One. Mendez La Fuente. Neil Kwong Wa Le. Vincent Anthony Layeta. William David Lake. Franco La Lama. Chao Quan Lam. Michael S. Lamana. Stephen Lamantia. Amy Hope Lamazov. Robert T. Lane. Brandon Mark Lang. Roseanne P. Lang. Vanessa Long Langer. Mary Lou Langley. Peter J. Legone. Thomas Michael Langone. Ma Michelle Bernadette Lenza. Ruth Sheila Lappin. Indebark A. D. Laribi. Robin Blair Larkey. Judith Camille Larocchi. Christopher Randell Larrabee. Hamidou S. Larry. Scott Larson. Joan Adam Larson. Natalie Janice Lasden. Gary Edward Lasco. Nicholas Craig Lassman. Paul Lazinski. Charles A. Lorenzen. Stephen James Lauria. Maria Lavash. Dennis Francis Lavelle. Janine Mary Laverde. N. A. Laverti. Stephen Lawn. Robert A. Lawrence Jr. Nathaniel Lawson. And my loved husband, firefighter Carl Franz Zassaro, that his legacy today continues living on by, by our children. We never forget, forget to you. God bless all. And my father, Donald G. Havlish Jr. Dad, I am so grateful to have you as my guardian angel who watches over me through all my adventures. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of you and miss you. I love you plus one.
David W. Leshek, Eugene Gabriel Lazar, James Patrick Leahy, Joseph Gerard Levy, Neil J. Levy, Robert G. LeBlanc, Leon Libor, Kenneth Charles Lede, Alan J. Lederman, Elena F. Ledesma, Alexis Leduc, Daniel John Lee, David S. Lee, Dong Chul Lee, Gary H. Lee, Huyun Jun Lee, Juanita Lee, Catherine Blair Lee, Lind Linda C. Lee, Lorraine Mary Green Lee, Myung Wu Lee, Richard Y. C. Lee, Stuart Su Jin Lee, Yang Der Lee, Stephen Paul Lefkowitz, Adriana Legro, Edward Joseph Lehman, Eric Lerfeld, David R. Leesman, David Prudencio Lemagne, Joseph Anthony Lehman, John Joseph Lennon Jr., John Robinson Lenore, Jorge Luis Leon Sr., Matthew G. Leonard, Michael Lepore, Charles Lesperance, Jeff Levine, John Dennis Levi, Alicia Karen Levin, and my uncle, Martin Morales Sampateca. Your passing has left a hole in our family, but has taught us that family is important. You live in every memory and in every thought. We miss you. And my uncle, Bradley Hodges Vadas. We all miss you every single day, and your legacy lives on for my brother, who is your namesake. Neil David Levin. Robert Levine. Robert Michael Levine. Shai Levinhar. Daniel M. Lewin. Adam J. Lewis. Jennifer Lewis. Kenneth E. Lewis. Margaret Susan Lewis. Yi Wei Liang. Orasri Liang Thanasarn. Daniel F. Libretti. Ralph Michael Lachardi. Edward Lickshine. Samantha L. Lightborn Allen. Stephen Barry Lilienthal. Carlos R. Lilo. Craig Damien Lilor. Arnold Abuleda Lim. Daria Lin. Wei Rong Lin. Nikki L. Lindo. Thomas V. Linehan Jr. Robert Thomas Linane. Alan Patrick Linton Jr. Diane Teresa Lapari. Kenneth P. Lara Aravello. Francisco Alberto Liriano. Lorraine Lisi. Paul Lisson. Vincent M. Lito. Ming Hao Lu. Nancy Liz. Harold Lizcano. Martin Lazul. George A. Jonas. Elizabeth C. Logler. Catherine Lisa Laguidice. Jerome Robert Lohez. Michael William Lomax. And my uncle, uh, Michael Cameron Lynch of Kenner Fitzgerald. Uh, we will always carry your memory in our hearts forever, Morty. Rest easy with Flowey. Look over our girls and pop. We love you. And my aunt, Maria Teresa Concepcion Santillan. I never met you, but I've heard great stories about you. I know you are looking down on us as our guardian angel. Lolo, Lola, Dieterre, and Dad miss you. We love you. God bless America. Stephen V. Long, Laura Maria Longing, Salvatore P. Lopez, Daniel Lopez, George Lopez, Luis Manuel Lopez, Malcavio Lopez Jr., Manuel L. Lopez, 
Joseph Lostrangio, Chet Deck Louis, Stuart Saeed Lewis, Joseph Libero, Sarah Elizabeth Love, Jenny Sue Kwong Lo Wong. My fellow Americans and most of all, the families of the heroes who perished here. It is September 11th again, and it is deeply humbling as Vice President of the United States to stand before you today at the Flight 93 National Memorial as we pause to honor the 40 heroic Americans who were lost in this place 18 years ago. Today, all across this country, Americans will pause to reflect, remember, and never forget the events of this day 18 years ago. In New York City, at the Pentagon, and here in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Here, where a common field one day became a field of honor forever. On this most solemn of days, our hearts are also with the families of the 2,753 men and women who lost their lives at the World Trade Center and the 184 men and women who perished at the Pentagon. The President just this morning paid his respects to the fallen outside the Pentagon. We gather, as President Trump said earlier today, in his words, as one American family, united by patriotism, bound by destiny, and sustained by faith in Almighty God. The Bible says, if you owe debts, pay debts. If honor, then honor. If respect, then respect. And President Trump asked me to be here today to pay a debt of honor to the memory and the families of the 40 passengers and crew members of Flight 93. Men and women who rose up, who fought back, and who met unspeakable evil with selfless heroism, and American strength. America was attacked on September the 11th. But America took the fight back to our enemies on that very same day. Not on some foreign battlefield, but right here. In the skies above these fields where the heroes of Flight 93 were forged. It was a beautiful Tuesday morning when Flight United, United Flight 93, left Newark Airport bound for San Francisco, carried on board 40 men and women from all across America from every walk of life. At only 20 years of age, Dory Francis Bodley was the youngest person on board. A student at Santa Clara University, she volunteered at her local animal shelter and aspired to be a child psychologist. On September 11th, she was flying home after visiting friends in New Jersey. Also on board was Edward Porterfeld, an accomplished man with degrees in Colgate, Cornell University, two patents in encryption technology, devoted husband, a father of two daughters. The New Jersey native was making a last minute business trip to San Francisco. Then there was a flight attendant, Wanda Anita Green, who had worked for United Airlines for 29 years, a mother of two, the deacon at her church. She earned a real estate license, dreamed of opening her own real estate office after retiring from flying. 
and Richard Guadano. As you just heard, a dedicated public servant, project manager for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, where he'd worked for 17 years. On September 11th, he was going home after celebrating with his parents, sister, and family, his grandmother's 100th birthday. A lawyer, public relations executive, an antique dealer, a World War II veteran. As you've heard so eloquently from this podium already this morning. They were ordinary Americans. But their heroism would inspire the nation. When they took off at 8.42 a.m., their flight must have seemed just like any other. They had no way of knowing that within four minutes, American Flight 11 would hit the North Tower. Within 21 minutes, United Flight 175 would hit the South Tower of the World Trade Center. And within 46 short minutes, their own flight would be hijacked by terrorists determined to strike another attack, this time on our nation's capital. And they had no way of knowing those 40 remarkable men and women that within 81 minutes from takeoff, their lives would be over. They would enter eternity but not before they had earned a place of honor in the annals of American history and in the hearts of every American. It was 9.35 in the morning when the plane diverted toward Washington, D.C. And immediately the men and women of Flight 93 sprang into action. They began calling their loved ones and soon learned of the attacks that were gripping our nation. When Tom Burnett's wife told him about the attack on the Pentagon, he replied, we have to do something. And so they did. At 9.47 a.m., Jeremy Glick told his wife that the passengers were voting on whether to charge the cockpit. And he later told her that those on board voted to act. So they did. Talking with her husband on the phone, flight attendant Sandy Bradshaw uttered words that captured perfectly her and the passenger's clarity of purpose. She said, everyone's running to first class. I've got to go. And in the midst of the chaos, a young husband and father, a man starting a business career, prayed the Lord's Prayer with an airphone operator and recited a verse from the 23rd Psalm. Only then to speak words that would echo the resolve of a nation. Let's roll. History records they ran forward. They charged toward the cockpit. And at 10.03 a.m., Flight 93 plummeted to the earth. Right here. In the early days after the attacks, a Pennsylvania state trooper hung an American flag on an old drag line sitting atop a hill overlooking this crash site. But now, 18 years later, there stands a memorial and an even more fitting tribute to the courage and sacrifice of that day. Just not far from here, stands a 93-foot-tall Tower of Voices, which today holds eight chimes, each with a different musical note, symbolize the voices of all of those lost 18 years ago. 
When played together, the notes form a perfect harmony, just as in their final moments, the men and women of Flight 93 worked in concert to defend our nation, defend our capital, and defend our way of life. Here at this memorial, the names of those 40 men and women are etched in marble. But I want to assure their precious families. They're also carved into the hearts and the memory of the American people. The Bible tells us that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And that's our prayer for you this day and every day. And it's our prayer for all of the families all across our nation who meet this day each year to remember a personal loss. We're with you. To the families gathered here, you honor us by your presence. And America stands with you. The American people will never forget or ever fail to be inspired by the courage of the men and women of Flight 93. We honor them by remembering them. And we honor them by resolving here and now that we will do as they did, each of us, in all of our varied roles to prevent such evil from ever reaching our shores again. When Flight 93 went down, the heroes aboard were the first of a new generation of Americans to rise up as citizen soldiers in what would come to be known as the global war on terror. After September 11th, the rising generation of the new millennium also answered the call and recruiting stations across the country had lines around the block. Since this day 18 years ago, 5.5 million Americans have stepped forward to defend our country by enlisting in the armed forces of the United States, and we honor each and every one of them this day. And we especially honor the memory of the nearly 7,000 other Americans who gave their lives on other fields of battle since this day 18 years ago. To their families looking on, we pledge. We will never forget or fail to honor the service and sacrifice of our fallen heroes. Today we honor those who fell on this hallowed ground. And in honoring them, we also honor every fallen hero since that day. We honor them by remembering their sacrifice and 
As President Trump has done from the first day of this administration, we also honor our fallen by ensuring that the men and women serving in our armed forces today have the resources, training, and equipment to accomplish their mission and defend this nation. And this we will always do. We did not start this war. We did not seek it. But in every year that's passed, our armed forces have taken the fight to the enemy on our terms, on their soil. We've met the evildoers with a resolve and force beyond anything they could have imagined. Our armed forces took the fight to the terrorists who attacked us in the mountains of Afghanistan. Their mastermind met justice at the hands of Navy SEALs in Abbottabad. And our armed forces just this year captured the last inch of territory controlled by the barbaric ISIS caliphate. But the threat of terrorism remains. And I can assure you, under this commander in chief, our armed forces will never relent until the earth is purged of the scourge of radical Islamic terrorism. What the terrorists of 9-11 did not understand is that the American people's love of peace is exceeded only by our resolve to defend our freedom. The fiery ordeal through which the heroes of Flight 93 passed lit the way for heroes that were to come. And it will inspire generations of Americans for all time. It is truly a privilege to be with you today here in Shanksville, along with my wife, Karen, to honor the memory of the heroes of Flight 93. I pay tribute as Vice President, and as a grateful American. But as I said when we were here two years ago, for us and our family, it's personal. 17 years ago, I was serving in Congress. And my wife and I made a point to bring our three small children here to this hallowed ground on a drive back from Washington, D.C. to Indiana. It was less than a year from that terrible day. But we wanted to come here, pay our respects, and make sure that our children saw this place and knew what happened here. I remember that day like it was yesterday. We didn't find this impressive memorial. We found a plywood wall painted with the names of the fallen. A timeline listed. and a wooden cross in the field. With the help of one park range, we learned of the sequence of that day. And I remember asking the ranger, if the United States Capitol was the target, at what time would the plane have reached the Capitol building? And what she told me, I'll never forget. For at the time she mentioned, I, along with hundreds of others, 
was standing near the east front of the House of Representatives. As I stand before you today, I say from my heart, I will always believe that I and many others in our nation's capital were able to go home that day and hug our families because of the courage and selflessness of your families, the heroes of Flight 93. ago on this occasion I toured the Memorial Museum and there I took note of one of the possessions of a passenger that was recovered at the crash site. Among what was left of what Todd Beamer brought on board was a book entitled A Life of Integrity by Howard Hendricks. As I looked at the display through the glass, I was struck by the book's title and how perfectly it represented what the men and women of Flight 93 demonstrated on that day, 18 years ago. Shortly thereafter, I purchased a copy of the same edition of that devotional book. And it has flown with me every day since on Air Force Two as a quiet tribute, not just to the man, but to all the passengers and crew of Flight 93, for all you've done for us. For what your loved ones did, for my little family and countless others in our nation's capital that day. We thank you. When heroes fall, words fail. For no greater love has a man than this, that he should lay down his life for his friends. This then is what the heroes of Flight 93 did. And it's important that we tell their story. I'm grateful that all of you are here today to hear it one more time. It's important that we tell their stories because as has already been observed, a whole generation of Americans has come of age with no personal memory of 9-11. So the rest of us, my fellow Americans, must tell the story. We must never forget and never fail to honor the memory of those who were lost here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. And this we will do. We will tell their story. We will honor their memory, always. So to the families of the fallen, as President Trump said this morning at the Pentagon, I say now, the memory of your loved ones will never die. They will always be with us. We will always tell their story to future generations. And as long as this nation endures, Americans will ever be inspired by the faithful and courageous words and deeds of the heroes of Flight 93. So may God bless our beloved fallen. May God bless and comfort the families gathered here and all those who suffered loss on this day 18 years ago. And may God continue to bless the United States of America with such men and women as the passengers and crew of Flight 93.
taken away from us, and yesterday would have been your 27th wedding anniversary, but I'm thankful every day for the loving mother and sister that I have. I'm also lucky to have people like Dud, Pam, and David in my life. I look up to you every day and hope that you're proud of me. Claudia, Mom, and I love you and miss you dearly. And my cousin, Judy Hazel Santillan Fernandez, and Maria Teresa Santillan. We, will, we miss you, Judy and, uh, and Maritas. We will always love you and always be in our hearts. Khan Niguk Nagoyan. Jody Tepedino Nicolo. Kathleen Ann Nikosha. Martin Stewart Niederer. Alphonse Joseph Niedermeyer. Frank John Niestat Jr. Gloria Nieves. Juan Nieves Jr. Troy Edward Nelson. Paul Nimbly. John Valentin Niven. Catherine McGarry Nowak. Curtis Terrence Noel. Michael A. Noeth. Curtis Daniel R. Nolan. Robert Walter Noonan. Jacqueline June Norton. Robert Grant Norton. Daniela Rosalia Notaro. Brian Christopher Novotny. Suichi Numata. Brian Nunes. Jose Nunez. Jeffrey Roger Nussbaum. James A. Oakley. Dennis Patrick Oberg. James P. O'Brien Jr. Michael P. O'Brien. Scott J. O'Brien. Timothy Michael O'Brien. Daniel O'Callaghan. Dennis James O'Connor Jr. Diana J. O'Connor. Keith Kevin O'Connor. Richard J. O'Connor. Amy O'Doherty. Marnie Pont O'Doherty. Douglas E. Olschlager. Takashi Agawa. Albert Ogletree. And my grandfather, Michael Sam Phillip, who I know watches over me every day. And my uncle, Michael Lawrence Collins. Uncle Mike, we love you, we miss you, and we hope you found peace and a pair of skis up in heaven. Philip Paul Ognebeni. John A. Ogonowski. James Andrew O'Grady. Joseph J. Ogren. Thomas G. O'Hagan. Samuel Otis. Patrick J. O'Keefe. William O'Keefe. Gerald Michael Olcott. Gerald Thomas O'Leary. Christine Ann Olender. Linda Mary Olive. Edward K. Oliver. Leah Elizabeth Oliver. Eric Top Olson. Jeffrey James Olson. Stephen John Olson. Maureen Lyons Olson. Tashahira Ada. Matthew Timothy O'Mahony. John P. O'Neill. Seamus L. O'Neill. Sean Gordon Corbett O'Neill. Peter J. O'Neill Jr. Michael C. Opperman. Betty Ann Ong. Margaret Quinn Olaski. Christopher T. Orgilowitz. Ruben S. Ornato. Virginia Ann Armiston. Ronald Orsini. Kevin M. O'Rourke. Juan Ortego Campos. Peter Keith Ortali. Alexander Ortiz. Jane Marie Orth. Emilio Pete Ortiz. David Ortiz. And my brother, Daniel M. Van Leer. Danny, we miss you, we love you. We keep you alive and the victims of 9-11 alive by your memories. Please never forget. And my brother, my big brother, Joseph John Hassan III, I drive by the memorial every day on my way to work and I, I speak to him like so many of us do every day. And I know he'd want me to take this moment to say how proud he is of his family. Mom, dad, sister Vicky, my sister Lord Mary, it's been 18 years to have our ups and downs, but we've been there for each other, and he's extremely proud of us. And my little nephew, Joe, who's not so little anymore, just started Villanova, how proud he is of you. Do great, big guy. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention two of his best friends, 
Mike Favalli, who set up a beautiful golf outing every year to celebrate my brother's life. It meant so much to us, you and your beautiful wife, Sue, thank you. And my brother's best friend, Arthur Idala, who's been like a second big brother to me. He's always been there for my family, and more importantly, he's been teaching my nephew about my brother and sharing stories with him. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my dear friends. He's been there all the time. My brother always said I had the best friends in the world, and he was right. And my beautiful wife, Cindy, Joe brought us together. I've known you my whole life. It wasn't until the loss of him that my eyes were open to see what I had in front of me. I know I haven't been the easiest person to live with, but I love you with all my heart. And thank you for my two beautiful children. I love you. God bless you all. Thanks for listening. God bless America. Paul Ortiz Jr. Sonia Ortiz. Masaru Ose. Patrick J. O'Shea. Robert William O'Shea. Elsie Carolina Osario Olivia. James R. Ostrowski. Timothy Franklin O'Sullivan. Jason Douglas Oswald. Michael John Olten. Isidro D. Ottenwalder. Michael Chong O. Todd Joseph Oida. Jesus Ovales. Peter J. Owens Jr. Adianas Oyola. Angel M. Pavon Jr. Israel Pavon Jr. Ronald Pacheco. Michael Benjamin Paca. Diana B. Padro. Deepa Pacala. Jeffrey Matthew Palazzo. Thomas Palazzo. Richard A. Palazzolo. Oreo Joseph Palma. Frank Anthony Palumbo. Alan N. Palumbo. Christopher Matthew Panettiere. Dominique Elsa Pandolfa. Jonas Martin Panic. Paul J. Pensini. John M. Palalillo. Edward Joseph Papa. Salvatore T. Papasso. James Nicholas Papa George. Marie Papalardo. Bernard Kuma Paracat. BJ Ashanker Parasmouthy. Nitin Ramesh Parakar. And my father, Captain Terence S. Hatton. We miss you, Dad. And my brother, Walwyn Wellington Stewart Jr. We love you forever and ever. Harde Parbo. James Wendell Carl. Deborah Murray Paris. George Paris. Guy Young Park. Philip Lacey Parker. Michael Allen Parks, Robert E. Parks, Jr., Hashmuk C. Parmer, Robert Harrell, Diane Mary Parsons, Leobardo Lopez Pasqual, Michael J. Pascuma, Jr., Gerald Hughes Paskins, Horace Robert Passanetti, Suzanne H. Pissarro, Avanashi. Raman Bai Patel, Dipti Patel, Avish Manish Patel, Stephen Bennett Patterson, James Matthew Patrick, Manuel D. Patrocino, Bernard E. Patterson, Clifford L. Patterson Jr., Sarah Mary Patty, Robert E. Patterson, James Robert Paul, Patrice Paz, Victor Hugo Paz, Stacy Lynn Peck, Richard Allen Perlman, Darrell V. Pearsall Jr., Thomas Nicholas Pecorelli, Thomas Pedicini, Todd Douglas Pellino, Mike Adrian Paletia, Anthony G. Peluso, Angel R. Pena, Robert Penninger, Richard L. Penny. And my sister, Hardy Casey Parbu. Today, I'm wearing my sister's jacket just for you, baby. I'm sure you're looking down and you're saying, look, look, that's my sister and she's wearing my jacket just for you, baby. Just, I love you. I would like to thank the 9-11 organization and the volunteers for their compassion and support to bring peace and comfort 
to the victims and the families on this very sad day. Thanks to a radio station in Montreal, the CJAD and Q92 for their tribute and for playing my sister's song, Bridge Over Troubled Water, to her and all the victims. After 18 years, my sister, beloved of Miss you, more no words can say. If all our memories can build a stairway to heaven and all our tears would build a lane, we would walk right back to heaven and bring you back again. Now you have brought a can and brought a rope and our loved ones, you all take care of each other and continue to look over us. You will live in our hearts forever. But there is no easy way to say goodbye. But we love you. And for all the names that I've read here today, may God bless those families and, and give them a resident place and continue to look over your families to, for, for them to pass this day. God bless everyone. Thank you. And my brother, Alfred Russell Mailer. Um, and to all that have lost someone, an anonymous quote. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. Still loved, still missed, and very dear. We love you always, Al. God bless. Salvatore F. Pepe. Carl Allen B. Peralta. Robert David Peraza, John A. Perconti Jr., Alejo Perez, Angel Perez Jr., Angela Susan Perez, Anthony Perez, Ivan Antonio Perez, Nancy E. Perez, Barry Berenson Perkins, Joseph John Parencino, Edward J. Perata, Imelda H. Perry, Glenn C. Perry, Sr. John William Perry, Franklin Allen Pershep, Danny Pesci, Michael John Pesherine, Davin N. Peterson, Donald Arthur Peterson, Jean Holdley Peterson, William Russell Peterson, Mark James Petrocelli, Philip Scott Petty, Glenn Karen Pettit, Dominic A. Pazzullo, Kayleen Elizabeth Pazzuti, Kevin J. Pfeiffer, Tu An Pham, Kenneth John Phelan Sr., Snay Ann Phillip, Eugenia McCann Piantieri, Ludwig John Picaro, Matthew Pacerno, Joseph O. Pick, Christopher J. Pickford, Dennis J. Pierce, Bernard Petronico, Nicholas P. Piotrunti, and my uncle, Jason Kyle Jacobs. We love and miss you every day. You're in our hearts forever. And my grandfather, Joseph Piscadlo, we love you and think about you all the time. Theodorus Pigas, Susan Elizabeth Pinto, Joseph Piscadlo, Christopher Todd Pittman, Joshua Michael Piver, Robert R. Plasier III, Zandra F. Plasier, Joseph Plumitalo, John M. Poacher, William Howard Pullman, Lawrence Michael Polich, Thomas H. Pohamas, Stephen Polisino, Susan M. Polio, Darren H. Pontel, Joshua Ayusa Poptine, Giovanna Horas, Anthony Portillo, James Edward Patorti, Daphne Pulatsis, Richard N. Polas, Stephen Emmanuel Polas, Brandon Jerome Powell, Scott Allen Powell, Sean Edward Powell, Antonio Dorsey Pratt, Gregory M. Preziozzi, Wanda Evelis Prince, Vincent A. Princiota, K. 
Kevin M. Pryor, Everett Martin Proctor III, Carrie Beth Progen, David Lee Prune, Richard A. Prunty, John Foster Puckett, Robert David Puglis, Edward F. Hollis, Patricia Ann Puma, David D. Punches, Hamath Kumar Putur, and my husband, Peter Mutos. We think of you often, especially with that ever ready smile. And thank you to all who have assisted in the victims of 9-11 move forward with their lives. We couldn't have done it without you. And thank you to all who keep our country safe. And my son, Deej Cessna, will meet at the hill, will run to the top. I will not forget you. I have carved you on the palm of my hand. Joseph J. Fisor, Jr. Edward R. Pycon. Christopher Quackenbush. Lars Peter Qualbin. Lincoln Kua. Beth Ann Quigley. Patrick J. Quigley IV. Michael T. Quilty. James Francis Quinn. Ricardo J. Quinn. Carol Millicent Rabelais. Christopher Peter Anthony Rockin Yellow. Leonard J. Regalia. Eugene J. Raggio. Laura Marie Raganisi Snick. Michael Paul Ragusa. Peter Frank Ramundi. Harry A. Rains. Lisa J. Rains. Etisham Raja. Valsa Raju. Edward J. Rawl. Lucas Rambusek. Maria Ramirez. Harry Ramos. Vishnu Ramsarup. Deborah A. Ramsauer. Lorenzo E. Ramsey. Alfred Todd Ranke. Adam David Rand. Jonathan C. Randall. Shreyas S. Ranganath. Ann T. Ransom. Faina Rappaport. Rhonda Sue Rasmussen. Robert A. Rasmussen. Aminia Razul. R. Mark Rossweiler. Marcia D. Ratchford. David Allen James Rathke. And my aunt, Maria A. Bear. We love and miss you. And my cool mom, Maureen Lyons Olson, who was at Woodstock 50 years ago this summer. You always said you were born cool, and you're still cool. We love you. William Ralph Robb. Gerard F. Rousey. Alexei Razuvayev. Gregory Rita. Sarah Ann Redheffer. Michelle Marie Reed. Judith Ann Reese. Donald J. Regan. Robert M. Regan. Thomas Michael Regan. Christian Michael Otto Regenhard. Howard Reich. Greg Reedy. James Brian Riley. Kevin O. Riley. Timothy E. Riley. Joseph Rena Jr. Thomas Barnes Rainey. Frank Bennett Reisman. Joshua Scott Reese. Karen Renda. John Armand Rio. Richard Cyril Rescorla. John Thomas Resta. Sylvia Sampio Resta. Martha M. Reski. David E. Reddick. Todd H. Rubin. Luis Clodoaldo Revilla Mir. Edvigas Reyes Jr. Bruce Albert Reynolds. John Fed Frederick Rhodes. Francis Saverio Riccardelli. Rudolf N. Riccio. Anne Marie Riccoboni. David Harlow Rice. Eileen Mary Rice. Kenneth Frederick Rice III. Cecilia E. Richard. Vernon Allen Richard. 
And my father, police officer Paul Talty, emergency service, truck 10, we love and miss you always. And my brother-in-law, Michael William Lomax, even though a lot of life has happened since that day, your legacy still lives on. Claude Daniel Richards. Gregory David Richards. Michael Richards. Venetia Orincha Richards. Jimmy Riches. Alan J. Richmond. John M. Regal. Frederick Charles Remily III. Rosemary Rizzo. Moises N. Rivas. Joseph R. Rivelli Jr. Carmen Alicia Rivera. Isaias Rivera. Juan William Rivera. Linda Ivelis Rivera. David E. Rivers. Joseph R. Reverso. Paul V. Rizzo. John Frank Rizzo. Stephen Louis Roach. Joseph Roberto. Leo Arthur Roberts. Michael E. Roberts. Michael Edward Roberts. Donald Walter Robertson Jr. Jeffrey Robinson. Michelle Lee Jean Robotham. Donald Arthur Robson. Antonio A. Rocha. Raymond James Rocha. Laura Rockefeller. John Michael Rodak. Antonio Jose Rodriguez. Anthony Rodriguez. Carmen Milagros Rodriguez. Gregory E. Rodriguez. Marsha A. Rodriguez. Mayra Valdez Rodriguez. Richard Rodriguez. David Bartolo Rodriguez Vargas. And my husband, Wavy Wong. We love and miss you each and every day. You will live in our hearts forever. We make sure your legacy will be continued through your beautiful children. And my mom, Irina Popakova Mayer. For all the times that I forgot to thank you, for all the special little things you do, for all the words that sometimes go unspoken, I need to say I love you, Mom, I do. And if at times I may have seemed ungrateful, I want to say I truly hope you see that, you have, that nothing you have done has been forgotten, and day by day you just mean more to me. Matthew Rogan. Jean Destrahan Rogier. Carly Rogers. Scott William Rahner. Keith Michael Roma. Joseph M. Robagnalo. Ephraim Romero Sr. Elvin Romero. James A. Romito. Sean Paul Rooney. Eric Thomas Robito. Aida Rosario. Angela Rosario. Mark H. Rosen. Brooke David Rosenbaum. Linda Rosenbaum. Cheryl Lynn Rosenbaum. Lloyd Daniel Rosenberg. Mark Lewis Rosenberg. Andrew Ira Rosenblum. Joshua M. Rosenblum. Joshua Allen Rosenthal. Richard David Rosenthal. Philip Martin Rosenswag. Daniel Rossetti. Richard Barry Ross. Norman S. Rossenow. Nicholas P. Russell Mando. Michael Craig Rothberg. Donna Marie Rothenberg. Mark David Rothenberg. James Michael Rue. Nicholas Charles Alexander Rowe. Edward B. Rowenhorst. Judy Rowlett. Timothy Allen Roy Sr. Paul G. Rubach. Ronald J. Rubin. Joanne Rubino. David M. Ruddle. And my uncle, Calixto Anaya Jr. Theo, whenever people talk about you, the one thing that stands out to me the most was your sense of family. And I know you'd be extremely proud of the amazing family you left behind and the amazing young men and women that we've grown into. We love you and we miss you. And to my father, Hugo M. Sine, a day doesn't go by that your memory is still alive within us. 
We still continue your legacy and remind our children of you always. We have a new family member, your grandson Riven Sine. We will teach them, all three grandchildren, Analia, Madeline, and Riven, that you were a great man, a wonderful father, and a great husband to all of us. We love you forever until the end of time. God bless America. Te amo, papito. Bart Joseph Ruggeri, Susan A. Ruggerio, Adam Keith Ruthhalter, Gilbert Ruiz, Robert E. Russell, Stephen P. Russell, Stephen Harris Rusin, Michael Thomas Russo Sr., Wayne Allen Russo, William R. Ruth, Edward Ryan, John Joseph Ryan, Jonathan Stephen Ryan, Matthew L. Ryan, Tatiana Rusoya, Christina Sunga Ryuk, Thierry Sada, Jason Elazar Sabad, Thomas E. Sabea, Scott H. Saber, Charles E. Sabin Sr., Joseph Francis Sacerdot, Jessica Lee Sachs, Francis John Sadocha, Jude Elias Safi, Brock Joel Safranoff, Edward Saya, John Patrick Salomon, Majori C. Salomon, Hernando Rafael Salas, Juan G. Salas, as Merlin Antonio Salcedo, John Pepe Salerno, Rama Sally, Richard L. Salandari Jr., Wayne John Salomon, Nobert Solomon, Catherine Patricia Salter, Frank G. Salvatera, Paul Richard Salvio, and my father, Christopher W. Woodenchak. We miss you every day. And my father, Maurice P. Kelly, he was a union carpenter who helped build this great city. Not only did he build the city, he built a family that truly misses him. He was a type of father who never missed one of my softball games growing up, but now with each passing year, I feel he's missing out on so much. I miss his presence more and more each day, his smile, his sarcasm, and his guidance. Dad, you are my protector and you are my angel. I know you forever guide us, my brother Sean and Tommy, and give us the strength from above. Love you, Dad. Samuel Robert Salvo, Jr. Carlos Alberto Samiago. John P. San Martino. James Kenneth Samuel, Jr. Michael San Philip. Hugo M. Sine. Alva Cynthia Jeffries Sanchez. Jacqueline Patrice Sanchez. Jesus <clears throat> Sanchez. Raymond Sanchez. Eric M. Sand. Stacy Leigh Sanders. Herman, Herman S. Sandler. Jim Sands Jr. Aileen J. Santiago. Kristen Reese Santiago. Maria Teresa Concepcion Santillan. Susan Gail Santo. Christopher A. Santora. John August Santor. Mario L. Santoro. Rafael Umberto Santos. Kellyanne K. Sarkar. Victor J. Saracini. Paul F. Sarl. Chappelle Renee Stewart Sarkar. Gregory Thomas Saucedo. Deepika Kumar Satellori. Anthony Sabas. 
Samuel M. Sal. John Michael Sabarro. Vladimir Savinkin. Robert Louis Scandal. David M. Scales. Dennis Saucedo. Michelle Scarpedo. John G. Scharf. John Abel Albert Scharf. Angela Susan Sh- Scheinenberg. Fred C. Schaffold Jr. Sean Schelke. Scott Michael Schnarzer. Robert A. Schlegel. Stephen Francis Schlage. Karen Helene Schmidt. John Schlissel. Thomas G. Schulz. Ian Schneider. Gerard Patrick Schrang. Frank G. Schott Jr. John T. Schroeder. Jeffrey H. Schreier. Edward <coughs> W. Schunk. Susan Lee Schuler. John Brokart Schwartz. Mark Evan Schermeyer. In- Anjan Victoria Savetta. Mark Schwartz. And and my uncle, who I never got to meet, and I'm named after Nicholas P. Petrunti. We will always remember you, Nicholas. Mark Scora and my son, Jeffrey Smith. We miss and we love you. We were very fortunate to have him in our lives for 36 years. Janice M. Scott. Randolph Scott. Christopher J. Scudder. Arthur Warren Scullin. Michael H. Seaman. Margaret M. Seeliger. Anthony Segarra. Carlo Segarra. Jason M. Sexer. Matthew Carmen Salito. Michael L. Salvis. Howard Selwyn. Larry John Senko. Arturo Angelo Sereno. Frankie Serrano. Marion H. Serva. Elena Sashinova. Adele Christine Sessa. Sita Nirmala Sunarin. Karen Lynn Seymour. Davis Greer Sesna Jr. Thomas Joseph Skaroy. Jayesh Shantanala Shah. Khalid M. Shahid. Mohammed Shah Jahan. Gary Shamai. Earl Richard Shanahan. Dan F. Shanown. Neil G. Shastri. Catherine Ann Shotsoff. Barbara A. Shaw. Jeffrey James Shaw. Robert John Shea Jr. Daniel James Shea. Joseph Patrick Shea. Kathleen Shearer. Robert M. Shearer. Linda June Sheehan. Hage Sheffy. Antoinette M. Sherman. John Anthony Shuri. And Sushi Shuratori. Thomas Joseph Schubert. Mark Shulman. C. Wong Shum. Alan Abraham Schwartzstein. Claren Shelley Siegel Schwartz. Joanna Sigmund. Diane T. Singner. Gregory Sukorsky. Stephen Gerard Siller. David Silver. Craig A. Silverstein. Nasima H. Simji. Bruce Edward Simmons. Diana M. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. George W. Simmons. Arthur Simon. Kenneth Allen Simon. And my uncle, Jaisro Malavuyo de Chave. Tito, this is my second time reading for you. I really hope you're proud of me. I've never met you before, but you'll always be in our minds, our hearts, in our everyday lives. I, I know you're up there watching me. I love you. Mahal na mahal kita. And I am Margaret Seeliger, who I'm honored to share my middle name with. I strive every day to continue your legacy. 
Your family loves, misses, and will never forget you. Michael J. Simon. Paul Joseph Simon. Marianne LaCory Simone. Barry Simowitz. Jane Louise Simpkin. Jeff Lyle Simpson. Cheryl D. Sincock. Kamlade Kami Singh. Roshan Ramesh Singh. Thomas E. Sinton III. Peter A. Syracuse. Muriel F. Siskopoulos. Joseph Michael Sisolak. John P. Scala. Francis Joseph Skidmore, Jr. Toyena Corliss Skinner. Paul Albert Skrizebeck. Christopher Paul Slattery. Vincent Robert Slavin. Robert F. Sliwak. Paul Kenneth Sloan. Stanley S. Smagala, Jr. Wendy L. Small. Greg H. Smallwood. Catherine T. Smith. Daniel Lawrence Smith. Gary F. Smith. George Eric Smith. Heather Lee Smith. James Gregory Smith. Jeffrey R. Smith. Joyce Patricia Smith. Carl T. Smith, Sr. Kevin Joseph Smith. Leon Smith, Jr. Moira Ann Smith. Monica Rodriguez Smith. Rosemary A. Smith. Bonnie Chahade Smithwick. Rochelle Monique Snell. Christine Ann Snyder. Diane Bullis Snyder. Leonard Steiner, Jr. Astrid Elizabeth Sohan. Sushil S. Solanke. Ruben Solaris. Naomi Leah Solomon. Daniel W. Song. Marie Ray Sopper. Michael Charles Soresi. Fabian Soto. Timothy Patrick Sulas. Gregory Thomas Spagnoletti. Donald F. Spampanato, Jr. Thomas Sparaccio. John Anthony Spataro. Robert W. Spear, Jr. Robert Spiceman. Maynard S. Spence, Jr. George Edward Spencer III and my uncle, Mark A. Marolo. Our family misses you. I wish I got a chance to meet you. Love you. And my brother, Joseph Michael Giacconi. I can't believe it's been 18 years, and you haven't sent me a rainbow lately, so I'm waiting. Send it soon. Robert Andrew Spencer. Mary Rubina Spirando. Frank Spinelli. William E. Spitz. Joseph Patrick Spohr, Jr. Klaus Johannes Brockham. Serenaya Srinuan. Fitzroy Sam Rose. Michael F. Stabile. Lawrence T. Stuck. Timothy M. Stackpole. Richard James Stadelberger. Eric Adam Stallman. Gregory Stipe. Alexandru Liviu Stan. Corina Stan. Mary Domenica Stanley. Anthony Storita. Jeffrey Stark. Derek James Stadkevichus. Patricia J. Stats. Craig. William Stout. William V. Steckman. Eric Thomas Steen. William R. Steiner. Alexander Robin Steinman. Edna L. Stevens. Andrews 
Sturgee Paul Sturgee Andrew J. Stern Norma Lang Stiorli Martha Jane Stevens Michael James Stewart Richard H. Stewart Jr. Sanford M. Stoller Douglas Joel Stone Loni J. Stone Jimmy Neville Story Timothy Stout Thomas Strada James J. Strain Jr. Edward W. Straub George J. Strauch Jr. Edward Thomas Strauss Stephen R. Strauss Larry L. Strickland Stephen F. Strauber Walwyn Wellington Stewart Jr. Benjamin Suarez David Scott Suarez Ramon Suarez Dino Xavier Suarez Ramirez Yoichi Sugiyama Sugiyama William Christopher Sugra Daniel Thomas Sor David Mark Sullins Christopher P. Sullivan Patrick Sullivan Thomas Sullivan Hilario Sariano Sumaya Jr. James Joseph Suaza and my aunt Lucia Crafasi. There's not a day that goes by that we don't think of you. I wish you were still here so I could greet you at the door like I used to every day when you came home from work. We miss you and love you very much. And my sister Gavharoy Komarzinova, we love you, we miss you every day. Colleen M. Sipinski. Robert Sutcliffe. Celine Sutter. Claudia Suzette Sutton. John Francis Swain. Christine M. Swearson. Brian David Sweeney. Brian Edward Sweeney. Madeline Amy Sweeney. Kenneth J. Swenson. Thomas F. Swift. Derek Ogilvy Stewart. Kevin Thomas Sozik. Gina Steinberg. Norbert P. Shurkovsky. Harry Tabek. Joan C. Tabik. Norma C. Tadai. Michael Tadonio. Kishiro Takahashi. K.G. Takahashi. Phyllis Gail Talbot. Robert R. Talhami. John Talignani. Sean Patrick Talon. Paul Talti. Marita Tam. Rachel Tamares. Hector Rogan Tamayo. Michael Andrew Tamuchio. Kenichiro Tanaka. Rondell Sherry Tankard. Michael Anthony Tanner. Dennis Gerard Taromina Jr. Kenneth Joseph Tarantino. Alan Tarasevich. Michael C. Taro. Ronald Tartaro. Deborah Tavalorella. Daryl Anthony Taylor. Donnie Brooks Taylor. Hilda E. Taylor. Kit P. Taylor. Leonard E. Taylor. Larissa Salon Taylor. Michael Morgan Taylor. Sandra C. Taylor. Sandra Dawn Teague. Carl W. Teepe. Paul A. Tegmeyer. Yeshivant Morshwar Tembe. Anthony Tempesta. Dorothy Pearl Temple. Stanley L. Temple. David Gustav Peter Tengelin. Brian John Terenzi. Lisa Marie Terry. Gomadi Thakardine. Harshad Sham Thate. Michael Theodoritis. And my uncle, William A. Matheson. It's an honor to stand here and speak your name. It's an honor to love your family. And it's an honor to remember you. And my father, Edward F. Pullis. 
first and foremost, before any of this happened, before 9-11 happened, my mom was born on this day. So I just want to say happy birthday to my mom. And as far as my father goes, I miss you and I love you. And I know you're watching over us, over my brother who's in the Navy, based in Pearl Harbor. You're watching over my sister and our whole family. Again, I miss you, I love you, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thomas F. Thurkoff, Jr. Leslie Ann Thomas. Brian Thomas Thompson. Clive Ian Thompson. Glenn Thompson. Nigel Bruce Thompson. Perry A. Thompson. Vanava Alexi Thompson. Nicola Angela Thorpe. Eric Raymond Thorpe. Sal Edward Thierry Jr. Tamara C. Thurman. Mary Ellen Chiesi. John Patrick Tierney. Kenneth Tejan. William Randolph Ts. Scott Charles Tomes. Stephen Edward Teague. Jennifer M. Tino. Michael E. Tinley. John James Tipping II. Robert Frank Tipaldi. Hector Luis Torado Jr. David Torado. Richard J. Tedisco. Michelle Lee Totolo. Vladimir Tomasevic. John J. Tobin. Thomas Tong. Otis V. Tolbert. Luis Eduardo Torres. Stephen Kevin Thompson. Christopher Michael Trina. Doris Torres. Abdul Kareem Choi. Amy Elizabeth Tovin. Walter Philip Travers. Daniel Patrick Trant. James Anthony Trentini. Glenn J. Travers Sr. Lisa L. Trayretola. Felicia Yvette Trailer Bass. Michael Angel Trinidad. Mary Barbara Trentini. Gregory James Trost. Caramo Baba Trera. William P. Celepez Jr. Francis Joseph Trombino. Michael Patrick Tucker. Willie Q. Troy. Ching Ping Tung. Zanetta Valentinova Soy. Donald Joseph Tuzio. Lance Richard Tumulti. Jennifer Lynn Semis. Simon James Turner. And my father, Michael Patrick Tucker, you were the best dad ever. Taylor, Gaffney, Morgan, and I love and miss you every day. Robert T. Tomey. John G. Uselhofer. And my brother, Chris Allingham. We love you always and miss you still. Thank you. Tyler Victor Ugolin. Michael A. Ulano. Jonathan J. Uman. Anil Shapari Umarkar. Alan V. Upton. Diane Marie Urban. John Damien Boccaccio. Bradley Hodges Vadas. William Valcarcel. Felix Antonio Vale. Ivan Vale. Benito Valentin. Santos Valentin Jr. Colton Francis Valvo II. Pendiala Vamsi Krishna. Erica H. Van Acker. Kenneth W. Van Auken. R. Bruce Van Hein. Daniel M. Van Leer. Edward Raymond Van Acor. John Charles Van de Vander. Frederick T. Virachi. Gopala Krishnan. Varadin. David Vargas. Scott C. Vassal. As well as Ismael Vasquez. Ronald J. Voke. Archangel Vasquez. Santos <clears throat> Vasquez. Peter Vega. Sankara Sastri Velamuri. Jorge Velasquez. Lawrence G. Velling. Anthony Mark Ventura. David Vera. Loretta Ann Verrill. Christopher James Villalonga. 
Matthew Gilbert Viana. Robert Anthony Vicario. Celeste Torres Victoria. Joanna Vidal. John T. Vigiano II. Joseph Vincent Vigiano. Frank J. Vignola Jr. Joseph Barry Villardo. Clarabel Villalobos Hernandez. Sergio Gabriel Vinanueva. Chantal Vincelli. Melissa Renee Vincent. Francine Ann Virgilio. Lawrence Virgilio. Joseph Gerard Vizquiano. Joshua S. Vitale. Marie Percoco Vola. Lynette D. Vosky. Garo H. Vosky Irijan. Alfred Anton Vucosa. Gregory Camille Bruno Wachler. Karen J. Wagner. Mary Alice Wallstrom. And my mother, Imelda Harris Perry. We love you, we miss you, and I am eternally grateful for your love, wisdom, and guidance. Thank you. And my dear wife, Carol Dimmitz, we all love you and will keep you in our hearts forever. Thank you. Honor Elizabeth Wiano. Gabriela Silvina Weisman. Wendy Alice Rosario Wakeford. Courtney Wainsworth Walcott, Victor Wald, Kenneth E. Waldy, Benjamin James Walker, Glenn Wall, Mitchell Scott Wallace, Peter Guider Wallace, Robert Francis Wallace, Roy Michael Wallace, Jean Marie Waldendorf, Matthew Blake Wallens, Mita L. Waller, John Wallace Jr., Barbara P. Bush, Jim Walsh, Jeffrey P. Waltz, Ching Wang, Waving Wang, Micah Walcola, Stephen Gordon Ward, Timothy Ray Ward, James A. Waring, Brian G. Warner, Derek Christopher Washington, Charles Waters, James Thomas Waters, Jr. Patrick J. Waters, Kenneth Thompson, uh, Kenneth Thomas Watson. Michael Henry Way, Todd Christopher Weaver. Walter Edward Weaver, Nathaniel Webb. Dinah Webster, William Michael Weems. Joanne Flora Weil, Michael Thomas Weinberg. Steven Weinberg, Scott Jeffrey Weingard, Stephen George Weinstein, Simon Weisner, David M. Weiss, David Thomas Weiss, Chin Sun Pak Wells, Vincent Michael Wells, Deborah Jacobs Welsh, Timothy Matthew Weltley, Christian Hans Rudolph Wemmers, Sui Wen, John Joseph Wenkus, Ole Day Weinenchuk, Peter M. West, Whitfield West Jr., Meredith Lynn Whalen, Eugene Michael Whalen, Adam S. White, Edward James White III, James Patrick White, and my cousin Port Authority Officer Christopher Charles Amoroso. Chris, there's not a day that goes by that you're not in our thoughts and prayers. Keep, uh, keep, continue to keep watch over us and keep us safe. To all the first responders, co uh, construction workers, military personnel and volunteers that were here on this day 18 years ago and remain throughout the months that followed, that are currently suffering and or have succumbed to 9-11 illnesses, we honor you, we pray for you. Your sacrifice will never be forgotten. And for the two that I keep close to my heart, you understand why. And my mother, Stacy Senes McGowan, who we miss more and more every day and every year, but continue to carry on through the memory of her love and the gift of Stacyness. We'll always remember you, Mama. John Sylvester White, 
Kenneth Wilburn White Jr. Leonard Anthony White. Melissa Y. White. Maudlin A. White. Sandra L. White. Wayne White. Leanne Marie Whiteside. Mark P. Whitford. Leslie A. Whittington. Michael T. Holy. Mary Lentz Wyman. Jeffrey David Weiner. William J. Wick. Allison Marie Wildman. Glenn E. Wilkinson. Ernest M. Wilcher. John Charles Woolett. Brian Patrick Williams. Candace Lee Williams. Crosley Richard Williams, Jr. David J. Williams. David Lucian Williams. Debbie L. Williams. Dwayne Williams. Kevin Michael Williams. Louis Anthony Williams. Louis Calvin William III. John P. Williamson. Donna Ann Wilson. William Eben Wilson. David Harold Winton. Glenn J. Winnick. Thomas Francis Weiss. Alan L. Wisniewski. Frank Paul Wisniewski. David Wiswall. Sigrid Charlotte Wiswick. Michael R. Wittenstein. Christopher W. Wodenchek. Martin Phillips Woolforth. Catherine Susan Wolf. Jennifer Yen Wong. Su Cheng Steve Wong. Brent James Woodall. Yuck Pin Wong. Marvin Roger Woods. James John Woods. Richard Heron Woodwell. Patrick J. Woods. John Bentley Works. David Terrence Woolley. Rodney James Watton. Martin Michael Woodley. John W. Wright, Jr. William Wren, Retire. Sandra Lee Wright. Neil Robin, Robin Wright. Say your next one. Say Jupiter. Jupiter Yem Bem. And my wife, Debbie Kaplan. And my beautiful brother, Michael Angel Trinidad. We love and we miss you. John D. Yamniki Sr. Suresh Yanamadala. Vicki Yancey. Chuyin Yang. Matthew David Yarnell. Myrna Yaskoka. Shakila Yasmin. Olabisi Shadi Layeni Yi. Kevin W. Yoakum. Edward P. York. Kevin Patrick York. Raymond R. York. Suzanne Martha Humans. Barrington Leroy Young, Jr. Donald MacArthur Young. Edmund G. Young, Jr. Jacqueline Young. Lisa L. Young. Elkin Ewan. Joseph C. Zaccoli. Adele Agabi Zachary. Arkady Zaltzman. Edwin J. Zambrana, Jr. Robert Allen Zampieri. Mark Zangrilli. Christopher R. Zarba, Jr. Ira Zaslow. Kenneth Albert Zellman. Abraham J. Zelmanowitz. Martin Morales Zempoal Tecatel. Chi Sheng. Mark Scott Zeppelin. Ji Yao Justin Ji. Yuguang Zheng. Ivalin Zeminski. Michael Joseph Zinzi. Charles Allen Zion. Julie Lynn Zipper. Salvatore J. Zissa. Procopios Paul Soyis. Joseph Z. Sokola. Andrew Stephen Zucker. Igor Zukoman. And my godfather and uncle, Richard Samuel Gabriel. Sunflowers always make me smile the way you always made me smile, and you continue to make me and my family smile every time your memory enters us. I want to thank first responders, especially Battalion Chief Oreo Palmer and Fire Marshal Ronald Buca, who died trying to save my family's life and many other lives, but also 
all the first responders and the volunteers and responders who continue to suffer with 9-11 related illnesses. Thank you for your service. And my sister, Catherine Patricia Salter. She was sister also to Tim, Cindy, Linda, and Mary. 18 years, we will not forget, we cannot forget. Keith A. Bloomfield. Patrick John Brown. Lillian Caceres. Stephen Dennis Caffiero Jr. Patricia Florence DiCiaro. Paul Robert Ekna. John Joseph Fanning. James Andrew Gadil. Jorge Luis Moron Garcia. Wilder Alfredo Gomez. Linda Granlund. Mark F. Hemshoot. Joseph V. Majiti. Thomas H. Mahone. Jeffrey James Olson. Barbara K. Olson. Pablo Ortiz. Susan M. Sauer. Vladimir Savik Savinkin. John Michael Sabaro. Sabarbaro. Dennis Scorso. Rafael Scorca. William H. Thompson. Alicia Nicole Titus. Yin Ping Wang. And my brother, Daniel James Gallagher. Not a day goes by that your family and friends don't wish you were still here. And I want to remember my cousin Steve Belson, who was first a lifeguard in Rockaway Beach and saved countless lives on the beach. And then as Mr. Ladder 24, FDNY. So for all you surfers out there, please continue to surf. And for all you lifeguards, please continue to save lives. Thank you. Jody, go on. You gotta go up. You're on stage now.